Shannon Savoy is the CEO of Narc Free Living LLC. She is an Army veteran of 23 years and now serves in the Army of the Lord. She is a trauma-informed narcissist abuse recovery coach, as well as a powerful, dynamic, Holy Spirit-led speaker. Shannon is a survivor of domestic violence and an advocate against abuse. She empowers others to break the chains of abuse through empowerment, edification, and education. Narc Free Living helps clients achieve their healing goals by introducing healthy coping skills, biblical, and practical strategies. Follow at Narc Free Living LLC on YouTube and all social media outlets for in-depth teachings. Let's break the chains of abuse. Visit www.narcfreeliving.com for more information. www.narcfreeliving.com All right. Hello, good people. How are y'all doing? Make sure my camera is good. All right. How are y'all doing? How is everyone doing? It's good to see you here. All right. Can, can you hear me? Can you see me? Am, am I live? Am I live and in living color? All right, y'all. Today we are talking about the religious covert and communal uh, narcissists. All right. We're talking about public angels. All right. Private devils. All right. And our scripture for today, one of our scriptures for today is the parable of the wheat and the weeds, the parable of the wheat and the tear. We're going to talk about this thing here on today. All right. Um, so uh, Matthew 12, Matthew 13 and 24 through 30. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night as the workers slept, as the workers slept, all right, his enemy came and planted weeds. They planted tear amongst the wheat and then slipped away. So when the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also began to grow. The tear also began to grow. The farmer's workers went out to him and said, sir, where you planted that good seed is now full of weeds. Where did they come from? And he said, the farmer ex uh, exclaimed that the enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. All right. And he said, then the, uh, the man, the worker said, should we pull out the weeds? And the farmer was like, no, we'll, uh, you'll uproot the wheat if you do that. Let them both grow together until, until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds tie them into bundles and burn them and to put the wheat into the barn. So chain breakers, don't you know that tear has been sown amongst the wheat? All right. That is what we are experiencing right now. This is what communal narcissists are. This is what covert narcissists are. This is what spiritual narcissists are. They come in in the church. They come in in the four wall church. They come in these communities and they assimilate. They're nothing more than tear being sown amongst the wheat. But we have to have discernment. We have to be on post in order to recognize these things. It's not all just on the church. All right. You are the church. Are we not the ecclesia? So God has commissioned each and every one of us. Yes, that's you. That's me. That's all of us to discern where there is tear amongst the wheat, because when the wheat and tear grow up together, they both look alike. Oh, but we're going to I'm going to show you what a tear looks like, what a wheat looks like. And these religious narcissists, these spiritual narcissists, these communal covert narcissists are nothing more than tear sown amongst the wheat. So can you discern a private angel or a, a public uh, angel from a private devil? Can you discern that? All right. Because the tear is growing and the wheat are growing up together. They're growing up together, but it's harvest time. Judgment is up on the house. It's harvest time. Do you hear me? And let me throw out my disclaimer. All right. This is not all churches. This is not all fivefold ministry leaders. We have some awesome ministries out here. We have some awesome leaders. We have some awesome pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, teachers. We have people who are on post. 
are you on post? Quit talking about what a church did this and a church did that. You are the church. Are you able to discern a wolf from a sheep? Are you able? That's part of your job. You have been commissioned soldier. You have been commissioned chain breaker. Are you able to discern a wheat from, from, uh, from the tear? Are you dis uh, able to discern a sheep from a wolf? Are you able to discern? Do you hear me? All right. Um, uh, don't uh, don't forget to follow my husband, Faith Based Workplace. He won't be on here today. He's out and about uh, at one of his home uh, showings. All right. So if you are interested, if you're in the Houston area, all right, he has a, a few listings. All right. If you are, are here, uh, uh, go to his uh, website. All right. I might put that on my website or something later, but you can look him up. Solomon Savoy with Coldwell uh, Be uh, Banker Realty. All right. We're, but these are faith based businesses. All right. And he's also on uh, here on YouTube. OK. And then um if you want to schedule a coaching session with me, all right, I have CBU. Y'all have a lot going on. Do you tell? Do you hear me? I have a lot going on. So I have CBU. I have Clubhouse. I have all kind of support groups for survivors of narcissist abuse. Some of them are free. Here on YouTube is free. My time is not free. Do you hear me? All right. I do a lot of things for for um, uh, survivors. All right. Because I know what it is to be that I'm I'm still a survivor. I'm still a thriver. All right. So I have Chain Breaker U University. Hello to Chain Breaker U. You can get a T-shirt online if you want to. I've sent this the T-shirt to, to a few of the women. All right. So if you want to purchase that, that is on the website. All right, but follow my husband, follow Faith Based Workplace. Uh, let me see who's in the comments. Oh, and don't let me forget, uh, if you cannot afford a session, you can also ask a question. All right, all right. So uh, you 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 go where your budget allows. All right, these form clubhouse is free. All right, some people don't, they think that everything should be free. Uh, everything in the body ain't free. Do you understand me? My clubhouse is free. This is free. All right, my time, look, when it comes to coaching and stuff, that's not free. All right. But I do give free stuff away with that as well. All right. So um, if you can't afford that, you can also ask a question on Wizio and I'll do a video with your question. and You'll get your question answered because I don't have time to be in DMs. All right. I have prayer requests on my website. It's all on my website. You can answer. You can ask a question. You can ask a prayer request. You don't have to DM me on Instagram and on TikTok because I'm not going to see it. I'm going to be totally honest with you. OK, I have avenues. OK, these are my boundaries. In order for me to keep my things tight and right, I have to make sure I have business boundaries. Do you understand? And those who are in business understand that. And those of you who don't, who I don't care. OK. All right. I really don't because those who are assigned to me, those I, I am, I invest in, in people that I support. All right. With no, with absolutely no problem. My friends have a business, have a ministry. I'm supporting that. All right. And I have no problems with it. Now, if you have a problem with that, then you're not, you're not here for me. You're not here for me and I'm not here for you. And that's quite all right. Go, go where you can. All right. All right. Stay within your budget and, and your boundaries. All right. So let me say a few hellos. Hello, Mina. Hello, Sabrina. You hear me? Hey, sis. Hey, it's good to see you. Hello, uh, Tiffany. Aces, uh, uh, Aces Matt, it's good to see you. Hello, Tiffany. Hello, Dorcas. Hello, Gaming with Jeremiah. Hello, HT. Hello, Lolly. Peace and blessings. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Cassandra. It's good to see you, love. Hello, Lyricist. Hello, Charlene in Florida. Hello, Jasmine and Des Rain. Max, and then for those of you who get mad when I greet people, deal with it. What you gonna do about it? Fast forward, fast forward. They have a fast forward button just for you. You're not gonna come up here and change change the way I do things. You you look, all you dictators, all you keyboard coward warriors who have something to say, bye. All right, you're not gonna. I'm still gonna speak to who I want to speak to. I'm still gonna speak to these people. I'm still gonna speak to them. So if you don't like it, fast forward through the message. All right, everything ain't for you. All right. Hello, Valerie. Hello, Joshua. It's good to see you. Okay, Jesse, you can hear me. Hello. Uh, is it Antoine? Good. good. Thank you. Thank you for being here. All right. We talk about narcissist abuse from a biblical perspective. I don't sugarcoat. All right. Uh, um, at some point, I'm not for everybody. I make that. Look, I'm not a clown. I don't tap dance and I don't shuck and jive for nobody. All right. So if you looking for a shucker and jiver, if you looking for somebody who is going to pacify you, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior through and through. 
Do you understand me? So I do things a little differently. Don't my channel ain't like nobody else's channel. Don't compare me to what anybody else, not even my husband. We I do things the way God has called me to do it. All right. So welcome for those of you who are your first time here. I may say some things that may shock you. I may say some things that you don't agree with. And that's OK. Some people don't know how to disagree with people in love. I don't look. We don't have the same brain. So you might disagree with some stuff like, you know what I say? And it's OK. I still love you. Just going about your business. Just just keep it respectful. Do you understand me? Just keep it respectful. Don't want none. Don't start. None. won't be none. All right. Hello, Sabrina. Oh, you got your shirt. Yay. Spiritual gangster. Yeah, I had to give that one to you. Uh, Charlene had mentioned that in CBU. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and put that on the shirt. And it was perfect uh, for you. Amen. Hey, Deborah. Hey, it's good to see you. Hello, Cindy. Amen. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Danielle. Hello, I am her. I love that. Hey, uh, Vita. It's good to see you amen amen we have to and when and you know some people are called to expose things we're all called to do that but you know and it's not exposure for exposure sake right it's exposure for two reasons for me all right so other sheep won't get led astray and then so that person can have a chance to come to repentance if if people think that what they do is okay and nobody holds them accountable then people continue on in their sin and in their foolishness and in their trickery all right now some people are reprobate they're going to do what they want to do when they want to do it but there there may be a chance for repentance all right and that's what we want we want to bring them into repentance OK, so that's why you expose It's not just exposure for exposure's sake. No, we don't do that. All right. We want people to come to God. We want people to have a change of heart. All right. And some people don't know and some people know and they don't care. All right. Let's be honest about that thing. But thank you, Lolly. I'm glad you get it. Yes, we are the church. Hello, Joy. It's good to see you. Grace and peace, family. Hallelujah. Right. Facts, Tiffany. They all look alike. Yes, it's harvest time. Right. Right. We shall know them by their fruits. Amen, Jasmine. Uh, amen. We'll be praying for you. CBU in the house. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. And you know, you look, you're going with me. You're going to get way more. You're going to get it's, it's, it's a different. It's different. It's different. And anybody that has talked to me understands that. All right. They come with the right spirit. All right. Hello. It's good to see you. The uh, Elza 84. Yes. Yes. Yes, warrior mom, using religion to feign goodness. That's absolutely right. It's the highest level of evil. All right, y'all. So hello to everyone. If I miss your name. Hello, love peace. It's good to see you. Hey, uh, Mel, it's good to see you. Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you said, well, you come out the jerseys. Oh, look, I have to look into that. Amen. Thank you so much for that. It, Cause it takes a lot out of you and people don't realize that, you know, people, people who ain't did nothing don't realize that what it takes to do something. So I know they made my people and they ain't my people. All right. You ain't never did nothing. It's easy for you to sit back and critique people who are doing something. Well, why does she do it like this? Or why? Where's your channel? Where's, what, what are you doing? How are you on post? Get on post, get on post. Hey, oh, okay. Hey, Kenda. CBU is in the house. CBU, yes. Amen. All right, so let's pray and get right on into this. All right. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you just thanking you for this time, thanking you for this hour. Lord, we ask for your fire and your anointing to fall down on this conversation. Lord, I repent for all of my sins made by commission and omission. Heavenly Father, I ask that you examine my heart, Lord. And Lord, don't let me speak in error. Heavenly Father, put your words, reduce all of me, Heavenly Father, so that they can hear a word from you, Heavenly Father, that will set the captives free because that's what we came here to do, Lord. We came to shine a light in darkness. That that's what we're called to do. You didn't call us to sit up under Jezebel. You didn't call us to sit under under these demonic uh, organizations where your the Ichabod spirit is up on the house where your glory has left the the ark the ark of the covenant has left. You didn't call us to sit under fake false ministries, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. So we bind up, Lord. You said that we have the power to rebuke and bind up uh, demonic authority, Lord. So that's what we came here to do to, to do on today. 
We serve notice on Jezebel. No longer will we submit to your authority. No longer, Ahab, with your unholy alliance. No longer will we make alliances and treaties with Jezebel. We don't submit to demons. We make demons submit to us in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we come with every piece of our armor on. We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. We're girded with the belt of truth. Lord, help me not to speak in error, Heavenly Father. My feet are shod with the gospel of peace, Heavenly Father. We're always ready to share a word in and out of season, Heavenly Father. So we're armored up on here on today, Lord, and we bind up monitoring spirits. Lord, blind them in the spirit. Those that come with ill intentions, those that come to be nosy, those that come to troll, we blind you trolls in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that came to monitor what uh, chain breakers are saying and who's doing what and who's doing where, we blind you in the spirit. May your computer burn up. May your laptop or your phone burn up in the spirit. Hallelujah. What your nosy self. Hallelujah. So Lord, we speak your blessings over your people, Lord. For those still uh, in this and going through it, Lord, give them justice, Lord. We've been praying. CBU, we're praying for justice in July, Heavenly Father. So we pray that your strong arm of justice rain down, Heavenly Father. You've given Jezebel time and space to repent. And Lord, that reprobate heart has caused them to harden their hearts, Lord, to harden their hearts against you, Heavenly Father. So Lord, may your arm of justice rain down, Lord. Protect your people in this hour, Lord. There is a remnant, Heavenly Father. There are those of us here, Heavenly Father, because you said, Lord, if my people who are called by my name would seek your face, if we humble ourselves, then you will come down and heal thy land. Then you will heal your people, Heavenly Father. So we're asking to be healed in Jesus' name because you are the greatest physician. You are Jehovah Rapha, Heavenly Father. So heal our bodies, Lord. Heal us from the spirits of infirmity, Heavenly Father. Heal us from headaches, Heavenly Father. Heal us from these octopus spirits, from these spirits of mind control that try to take over our mind and have us ruminating over these daggone demons, Heavenly Father. We bind it up. We bind up every soul tie agreement, every covenant agreement that we made, Lord, unknowingly or knowingly, Lord. Bind it up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No more will we surrender. No more will we retreat. No more will we cower in fear of Jezebel. God has made you a warrior. How dare you have the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, and you submit to Jezebel. A true prophet will never submit to a false one. Come out of these false organizations. Come out where the Ark of the Covenant has left. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we pray. We pray, Lord, that the arm of justice be brought down in July, Lord. Those who have uh, been, things have been stolen away from them. Their lives have been changed, Heavenly Father. Turn it around. Turn it around for their good. Turn it around. And then you got to realize, you got to buckle up, buttercup. This is war. The world war has been declared on you. So you declare war on Satan. You declare war on those demons. You declare war on Jezebel. Don't you know who you are in Christ. Your identity was tried, was stripped away from you, but God is doing a new thing in you. He's preparing you. He's grooming you. He's raising you up in his ways. This thing didn't just happen to you, just that happened so you can lay down on the ground and die. Get your butt up from there. Get your butt up. Take those sackcloth off. How long can you mourn death? How long can you mourn? How long can you stay in Egypt? How long, Israelites? How long, Judah? How long will you mourn uh, Egypt? How long? Are you a forgetful people? You complaining people? Don't you know who God is? You better recognize. You better recognize talking. All you do is talk about the narcissist. How about you flip that? thing and tell the narcissist about your God. See how things change in the atmosphere. Always talking about what the narcissist did and how they did it. How about you talk about God? How about you give some of that attention to God? How about you fall on your face and thank God you still have a roof over your head even though the enemies are attacking you on every side? How about you praise God and see how that changes your atmosphere? See how you go from a victim to a victor? How long can you stay in victimhood? How long can you stay in 
clown town. How long can you stay in Northland? How long can you stay in the gutter before you rise? Aren't you ready to rise? So Heavenly Father, speak to your people, Lord. Give us your anointing, Heavenly Father. Rain down on this conversation, Lord. And we give you all the glory. No glory is due us, Lord. All the glory is due you, Lord. How we won't share, we you won't share your glory with us. You're too magnificent. So we give it all to you. We praise you, Lord. We give you a collective praise. It's nobody like you. We were made to worship you. We weren't made to continuously complain about Jezebel and narcissists. They're Oh, rise up, rise up higher. Get up out of that gutter with that gutter snipe. Hallelujah. Arise and take your rightful place in the kingdom. You're an heir to the kingdom and you'll worry about a serpent snake. You're an heir. You're an heir. Put your crown on, brother. Put your crown on, sister, and recognize. You better recognize who you are. You better know who you are in the spirit. Get away from that trash, hallelujah, when you are a treasure. Get up out of that garbage. Get up out of that gutter and come on up to glory. Hallelujah. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Try God. Taste him and see that the Lord is good. I tasted him. I was a hot mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I tasted God. I left it all right there. And I said, God, if you heal me, if you change me, if you work through me, Lord, I'll submit myself to spiritual ICU. Hallelujah. Because I need a spiritual oil change. I need my software to be changed. That's what we talked about in CBU this week. Lord, give us a spiritual oil change. We need spiritual jiffy lube. We need our minds rewired. We need our software rewired, hallelujah, to stop those ruminating thoughts. We need you, Lord. We can't make it without you, Heavenly Father. Your will, your way, your time, hallelujah, is all for your glory, hallelujah. Give it to God and see if he won't do a new thing. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Protect this life, Lord. Protect your people, Lord. Send your angels, Lord, to encamp and surround them, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you are and everything that you are doing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. See if God won't do a new thing in your life. See if God won't do a new thing in your life. Try a new thing. Try to stop complaining for once and see if God won't do a new thing in your life. Amen. I won't go back. I can't go back. How can I go back to the old me? The old me was, oh, oh, I don't want the old me. Throw that trash out. That's right. No victim here just made me draw closer to my king of kings. Hallelujah. Hello, Queen Sunshine. That's right. Hallelujah. Rebuking all Jezebels and Ahabs in the name of Jesus. Fire, rain down fire, Lord. Rain down your Holy Spirit fire. Rain down your Holy Spirit anointing. Rain down. He's doing a new thing, won't he do it? He's doing a new thing. All aboard. He's doing a new thing. All right. So let me get into this. Let me get into this, y'all. So I encourage you to keep reading about the wheat uh, in the tear. All right, as we go along. So let's talk about these communal narcissists. All right. So we know that narcissists are master illusionists. They are Decepticons. They are transformers. You remember that? Transformers more than meets the eye. Transformers, robots in disguise. That's what a narcissist is. Whatever, what, whoever they're around. All right. Whoever they're, you know, they're trying to uh, uh, get next to, that's what personality they pull out. All right. If you go to church, oh, the narcissist could not have ever went to church in their life. And now they, they are church. They go to church too. Cause all they do is look on your Facebook, on your social media, and they see, excuse me, that you go to church. So they putting out their church hat. Them jokers don't go to church. And even if they, they could be pastors, they could be, you know, members, they could be any of that. All right, but they look, they they preach God, but their hearts are far removed away from him. They are Decepticons of the highest orders. All right. And Matthew 7 and 15, you know, God told us, Christ told us to beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. All right. And unfortunately, y'all, 
unfortunately the church the four wall church because y'all this is what we have to understand go back and watch my messages on false the false church all right there is a counterfeit church there is a false church there are false marriages so when people say god hates divorce you gotta understand you know, don't remarry don't guys you gotta understand spiritual law you have to understand spiritual covenant and those that live by the law now not that christ came to do away with the law but those who live by the law only cannot understand things of the spirit all right and christ said we must serve him in spirit and in truth so there is a false church there are false converts, all right? And there are false members, all right? There are false marriages that God is not a part of. Will he cover you in grace and mercy for a season? Absolutely, he will, all right? But there is a such thing as free will and permissive will. You have to study those things, all right? So when people are telling you in the church, God hates divorce, you shouldn't remarry, you're going to hell, you have to study by Holy Spirit. You have to exegete scripture you have to understand spiritual law you have to understand why god said those things every marriage is not put together by god and people who don't who, who have a religious spirit will try to keep you in bondage christ didn't come to keep you in bondage and in and embedded with a demonic entity somebody who was full of demons who does not want to be changed and you keeping yourself so tied to that because your pastor and the members are going to excommunicate you if you do you better get your hat your coat and get up out of there you better go to holy spirit i don't let people put me in oh if you agree mary man i had to fall down on my face and talk to god about that thing do you understand me oh if you're divorced you better go to god yourself because religion communal narcissists narcissists or not will try to keep you in bondage you better know god for yourself do you understand me now they won't talk about the abuse but they'll talk about divorce get up out of here get up out of my face get up out of my face all right when i see those comments i could be like girl you just wrote that all for nothing because i didn't went to god about everything and he gave me peace about it all right so you might as well get up out of my comment section all right so unfortunately the church is a breeding ground all right so this message is not so you can be fearful but armed with knowledge god says my people perish because of lack of knowledge all right so we have to keep in mind the narcissist's goals right the narcissist's goal is to break you to break you how many of you tried the narcissist tried to break you all right, like in slave times, it was called buck breaking. The men would buck break other men. That's what the narcissist is trying to do to you in the spirit. They're trying to break you, break you down into submission. Parents, the same thing. The child that the parent cannot break, all right, is the one that gets to the, the worst. That's going to be the designated scapegoat because that child does not go along to get along. So they make up in their mind if they can't, if look, if they, they try two ways. Now, if they can't get you through niceness, then they'll try to break you, all right, through, through uh, avertness. So the narcissist's job is to break you. That's right. They want your destruction. That's what they want do you understand me all right so that's what jezebel's bag is is to kill control lead into immorality idolatry worship of false gods and to subdue the true prophets of god all right so if you pay attention communal narcissists religious narcissists they really preach another jesus we're gonna talk about that they preach this tolerant this love and light jesus this fake four wall jesus this watered down tupac don't judge me jesus all right so uh no no they preach another jesus so while you were sleeping tears were sown amongst the wheat all right so communal narcissists they have a grandiose inflated perception all right uh in a communal environment a church environment is perfect for narcissists it's perfect for them because it's a place where people are taught to turn the other cheek it's a place where people are told you know to just forgive they're taught an unbiblical for uh uh repentance 
All right. God gives us when we forgive. Are we called to forgive? You know, are called so we can release them? Absolutely. But the uh, most some of the churches, some of the communities. All right. Some of the, the uh, churches, they preach that, you know, you just turn away and you and families, too. And they abuse you and you just let them back in your life. That ain't biblical. That's stupid. That's stupidity. That's not operating in wisdom. Once I see how you operate. All right. I don't let you keep letting you back in the inner chambers of my heart. I would be a foolish woman. And at one time I was a foolish woman because that's how I operated until I got with God. And he showed me that this was a lie. You believed a lie. I didn't tell you to keep letting people back in your heart who've shown themselves that they are not trustworthy, who have shown themselves that they cannot uh, love you, who have shown themselves. I caused you to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. The understand me so communal narcissists they they have excellent social skills all right and they're very charming narcissists are typically always charming all right and they like to, to view themselves as upstanding citizens all right and nurturing okay now impasse is tricky right so i'll never claim some people be like oh i can recognize a narcissist a mile away i can recognize a covert narcissist i mean an overt Oh, covert. No, uh, uh, I don't, I can't recognize them as easily. Uh, uh, they assimilate, especially in here. It's a narcissist in here right now. It's narcissist in here right now, pretending to be empathic, pretending, pretending it's a covert, a communal narcissist in here right now and i hope your flesh is on fire i hope your spirit is on fire i hope it is i hope this word permeates your little evil spirit you slick snake i hope it does all right so these people they they proudly announce you know everything that they do you know what i mean you know they they and it's not so to really help people it's all about motive and i'm not saying you shouldn't say when you help people or anything like that it's all about the motive it's all about the heart that makes a difference so that doesn't mean now you don't say what you did i'm not saying that don't take it to the other extreme don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. hear what i'm saying these people do it with evil intention so now you're looking at like oh yeah 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 look look at that all right and they they always have to brag on everything that they do they're all about titles <clears throat> all about titles now, are we not servants servant is not good enough they have to have a title I'm bishop such and such and you better not call them anything up outside of their title do you hear me they'll, they'll look they'll look they, what brother and sister is not good enough that's not good enough. They have to be elevated in some way to let you know that I am. No, 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 no. I'm above you. I'm a no, 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 no. You're, you're a mere mortal. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I am bishop. I am bishop, pastor, look, event, whatever it is. All right. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a title, but these people live and die by their titles. All right. Servant is, are we not servants? I'm a servant. I'm a servant of the most high God. All right. I don't need no fancy title. I don't, I don't need it. It's all dumb. All right. And then some of these people, they are into the law of attraction. All right. Then brought the law of attraction and brought new ways to the church. Got the church talking about manifesting and, and, you know, better brought witchcraft right to the church. All right. And then some of them are legalists and Calvinists. All right, legalistic can teach and preach the Bible and don't live nothing by the spirit. Think spiritual warfare. Oh, you think everything is a demon? Everything is not. They don't. They they couldn't fight spiritual war. They couldn't fight out of a paper bag. Do you understand me? But they know theology. They know religion. They know works. Do you understand me? They are highly legalistic. That's right. Fire of God. Rain down on you, narcs. That's right. Rain down. Rain down, thunder and fire, hell and brimstone. All right. So, uh, uh, and then in a church, you know, you must go through them to be released. You must. You, God didn't give you your mission. All right. You can give them the courtesy and say, look, this is what I'm doing. But if they say no, then you can't do what God has told you to do. Oh. Huh. I didn't know my, my purpose was a team meeting with, with the whole church. That's religion. 
And you can't do anything unless you go through them. I've seen people who can't dress, who can't dress a certain way. Now, we, we dress modesty. I dress modesty and tasteful. But my personality is still, you know, you know what I mean? I do things in, in tastefulness. You ain't gonna see, you ain't gonna see me out there like that. No, but that's not good enough. No, they have to change your hair. Your hair has to be uh whatever they deem that it's supposed to be. We're gonna talk about uh Warren Jeffs. All right, we're gonna talk about some communal narcissists. So you Jim Jones, so you get a, a, a vivid picture. Now they are on the more extreme. There are some who are less who are you. you you can it's like some you just can't put your finger on it so they dictate the way you wear your hair they dictate the way you dress they dictate your life decisions no you in a cult boo you in a cult you in a cult yeah they know religion they always use religion all right all right and then let's talk about these in this community Let, let's let's go here do you do you want to go here with me all right then you have people here that use use my youtube platform use my clubhouse use these spaces it's not mine it's god's all right to lure you off dating you down in the dms you better open your eyes you better open your spiritual eyes mary 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 trying to have conversations with you in the dms and I'm not, you know, and it's under the guise, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to help you. You, you just got out of a narcissist abuse yesterday. What you helping me with? You better start opening your spiritual eyes, chain breakers. Do you understand me? I'm not in no man's DMs. Do you understand? I don't even like DMs. What to, email me. Keep on front street. Don't be trying to hide. Don't be trying to come in my DMs, sneaky snake. And you should be the same way somebody marry and then they in adultery but preaching. No, what you gonna talk to me about? Come up, come up out of that. Come up out of that. This is, and I've said this before, this is a hospital. This is not a place for hoeing and hookups. Do you understand me? This is not a place, all right, for you to meet your boo thing. You and I see you. You got the hospital gown on with the flap out in the back and you walking down the hallway giving eyes to somebody in the comment section you better wake up you better wake up silly woman you better wake up silly men we don't want to be led astray it ain't just the, the the brothers it's sisters too this ain't for hoeing and hookups it's for healing all right a married person not supposed to be in your back channels and your back channels what look that, that that's why some men don't understand that's why i don't talk to men as much because i love i don't want no appearance of that thing you ain't gonna have you i ain't gonna have my husband out here looking like a fool uh-uh not me nope 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 not me i ain't about to have my husband out here looking like a fool oh shannon was in my no i wasn't that's a lie that's a lie for, look baby here the emails go right here i'm on front street everything i do i do it on front street ain't nothing to hide ain't no secrecy in here it's transparency no you want to know i'll show you oh no this we, we right here it right right here no 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 they're alive they lying so watch it when people are always trying to be in your dms they ain't even healed and you what you doing the blind leading the blind all right why why don't make me go sister sardine on y'all why is brother such and such in your dms we here for healing and they trying to hook up with you good morning boo good afternoon boo how you doing boo what you doing what scripture are you reading today then y'all both sitting up there looking what what scripture are you reading today no, you ain't thinking about no. You got wedding bills on your mind. You supposed to be in ICU. Why is brother such and such in your DMs? Why is sister Sardine in your DMs, brother? Giving you counseling. How they giving you counseling? They can't counsel them on their own selves. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, silly women. Come on. Wising up wasn't oh all right and then you got to understand brothers let me talk to my brothers and i'm gonna talk to my sisters brothers if you are here for hookups you could if you actually if you are even here for healing and i'm not saying you know we just have to be careful with the way we do things these women are healing 
their hearts are broken. And then they see a man come into this community and it seems like he's talking good talk in these comments. Don't you know, to a woman who is broken, you know, that who has a father wound, who has a, a daddy wound. And now you're appealing to that. She's broken, brother. She's in ICU. This, look, no. Some of them are pookies and some of them are pookies. Some of them are crazy, brothers. I ain't gonna lie. Some of them ain't right in the head. Let's, let's just be honest. You want me to be honest or you want me to play Brother Barracuda? Yeah, yeah, Barracuda. Brother Barracuda in here sharking, thirsting, thirst trapping down in the DMs. All right, all right. So, right, unfortunately, some people are not strong enough and they get detoured from their healing. So now you ain't, you didn't got out of one narcissistic relationship and now you got to heal from Brother Barracuda. You, you came here for healing. You came to church and this is in your church too. You went to church for healing and now you only, you, yo, you got one soul tie from your husband or your ex. Now you got to heal from Brother Barracuda. No, no. Brothers, leave these women alone. Leave them alone. All right? They're healing. They ain't right yet. They ain't not right yet, and neither are you, sir. All right? And same for my sisters. All right? I don't have conversations I can't tell my husband about. All right? Don't, don't, don't do that. All right? If the brother, you see the brother is hurting. You see hurting. Here you go. Go email me. Message me. Look, pray for him. Pray for him. And I'm not saying brothers and sisters can't pray, but it, look, look, you got to understand. He may have a mother wound. He may have a, a, a attachment style that when he sees a woman show him love, now he, look, looking at you like uh, Byron on the Players Club. Look, he just want to see you. He just, look, look, looking up at you like, I just want to see her. Is she coming on the live today? Byron is waiting for you, girl. Byron is waiting for you, Diamond. Byron is waiting for you in the, I just want to see if she's going to be on Clubhouse today. Look, Byron ain't healed. All right? So leave him alone, you devil in a blue dress. Leave him alone. All right? Understand. Understand what's going on, okay? And then I told you, in some situations, I told you it was a whole witch in here. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, actually. All right? But let's, let's, let's break this down. Let's, let's break this down. Now, I can be wrong. I can be wrong. But I tell you, but I tell God, all right, not, don't let me be in error, okay? Don't let me be in error, but show me. And then once you show me, don't let me be uh, misled because of my emotions or because I like the person, all right? All right? But I can tell you anyone that God has told me to stay away from, he ain't been wrong yet. He ain't been wrong yet. Whether he told you the same thing or not, he ain't been wrong yet. Now it's up to you. You do what's best for you. Ain't nobody you know, controlling nobody here. All right. But let, let's check this. If somebody claims to come into this comment section, I, I want you to, to learn how to check fruit. All right. Somebody comes to this comment section and they say they come from a long line of witches. They deal with Ouija boards. They deal with all this stuff. And let's just say, let's just say, let's just say. They were in a 30-year marriage. And the day they come out, they're all up in these circles. They got channels set up. They got clubhouses set up, doing clubhouse rooms. Let's just, let's just examine this thing with our spiritual eyes. Come on, not with our emotions, not with what we hear, not with what our empathy. Let's just examine this situation. They got a whole slew of accounts. And then they're luring victims into the back channel like Hansel and Gretel. They, they, they got you in the, call me. What am I calling you for? You haven't even went through deliverance yourself. And they told us this. This witch told us this. All right. Said that she didn't, that she had delivered herself. Ain't nobody going to say nothing wrong. Call me, got, got luring people into the back channel like Hansel and Gretel. Got y'all on the phone, had y'all on the, some of y'all on the phone with her for hours. 
speaking that nard juice in your veins. Now, just tell me. Now, if I'm wrong, God, look, I repent. All right. But let's just examine this thing with our spiritual eye. Does that seem like a wise? Does that seem like wise counsel to you? Does it? I'm like Nino up in here. Ain't nobody seen nothing. Ain't nobody seen nothing. Kareem, you ain't seen nothing. You sitting in every room with me. Nobody's discerning that there's a witch in the midst. Nobody. Sit your $5 butt down before I made change. Nobody is discerning that this thing might be something wrong. One of these things ain't like the other. Nobody in the church, nobody in the comments seen nothing. Nobody going to say nothing when, they, when this witch was saying crazy stories. See, that's the problem. Oh, this person is cool, but she seems cool with Shannon, so I'm not going to say anything. No, I don't care what apostle they align themselves with what evangelist i don't care who they align themselves no one is discerning that this is a witch no one stories just got more and more extravagant all right more and more every time why because pookies was in the midst pookies wasn't saying nothing nobody was discerning so these people hang around just to steal and to lure you down in the DMs like Hansel and Gretel because they are public angels and private devils. All right. I'm not talking to you, witch. So you think, and then you got people that think, oh, you shouldn't just say anything. It don't make the body of Christ look bad. No, you make the body look bad by tolerating this witch called Jezebel. Instead of calling out this foolishness, all right, you people make unholy alliances with witches, and I'm supposed to be oh, I'm the I'm the troublemaker because I say something. No, I'm built different. You sit over there silent, Susie. This is how snakes and covert communal narcissists infiltrate. Nobody want to say that. Then we sit back and. Oh, we don't want to say anything because if we do, it's going to make it look like I'm the troublemaker. It's going to look like, like I'm the narcissist. It's going to make it look like, uh, you know, we're starting trouble in the body. And, and instead of addressing it, we're just going to act like everything's okay. And I'm going to align myself with people who are aligned with this witch. No, you got me twisted because I understand the power of spiritual covenants. All right, now people, no, don't don't say nothing. Silence, Susie. Silence, Sarah, but not me. All right, and this is how snakes and communal narcissists lure other people off in the back channels because we're not on post. Nobody want to say anything. Hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil. No, not me. All right, now I don't speak on everything. I move with the Holy Spirit. So just because I don't speak on it don't mean I don't see it. But maybe we all should be more discerning. So these communal narcissists come in, come in. Amen. I'm telling lyricists, I'm telling. Because this is why. Silent Susie. All right. All right. Silent uh, uh, Saul. This is why. Because we're not seeing anything. We're not. I look, I look, all my view is limited. All right. All right. And even if you say something, all I'm going to do is take it to the Holy Spirit. He's going to confirm or deny. But we have to get out of this. Well, I don't want to say anything because I could be wrong because I understand. I understand there's a risk with that. But I'd rather you say something and I take it to God and, and either God going to confirm it or he ain't he going to deny it. All right. And he, and then that's going to be it. Now, I'm not here to control just because I see something doesn't mean you see something. All right. But I'm going to warn you. I'm going to at least warn you. I ain't no silent Sarah. And then you take it to God. Now, if I'm wrong, oh, I repent. I'm sorry. But I, I thought it was best that I tell you, you know, so at least, you know, now, you know, I'm not trying to start any mess. I'm not trying to start any drama or anything like that. But at least you can go to God. We both go to God and we both pray about this thing and we see what God tells us. If you choose to keep dealing with them. Fine, fine. But I know as for me, I'm not. I'm not. All right. And that's it. No harm, no foul. Right. No harm, no foul. All right. But these could we also we where's the watchman? We're gonna talk about the watchman, Jasmine. We gonna that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, I'm like, warn me, warn me, because all I'm gonna do is tell God. Right. When they are silent, they are following soup bam with the devil. I hate to be the right because I understand that the spiritual implications of being a silent Sarah. No, it ain't going to be me. I will snitch on a witch. <laughs> I will snitch on a witch, Mel. I will snitch on a witch. Look, 
Look, amen. All right, so communal narcissists. Communal narcissists also adopt children just to abuse them. Y'all remember I talked about this before. The lady, um, uh, Jennifer Hart, all right, this was this lesbian couple, um, and they adopted uh, black kids. Now, we know that this can be black, white, all right? Um, I'm just bringing this up because it's what the article says. Now, she adopted these black kids, right? These were examples of communal narcissists. So you understand what this is. Now, they are on the higher spectrum. All right, so do y'all remember this little boy? uh Devante right on the left okay so Devante uh was captured uh he had a sign that said like free hugs or something like that all right and it was captured and, and it went out you know all in the media and everything right when BLM and was going on so these women adopted these uh these uh black children all right only to abuse them this is what communal narcissists do all right and then the women jennifer hart and her wife all right end up killing these children all right so uh the headline says lesbian mothers kill their six children in murder suicide after driving off a cliff all right um trigger a warning okay so if you don't want to listen to this part, don't listen. All right. So Jennifer Hart was drunk at the wheel of the SUV when it plummeted 100 feet into the Pacific Ocean. All right. And I forgot what year this happened. I'm sure some of y'all know about this. All right. But Hart didn't act alone. Investigators also found out that prior to the crash, Hart's wife, Sarah, not silent Sarah, it's always an Ahab to a Jezebel. All right. Was searching for ways to end their family's lives on her phone. Now, see, this is what sociopath is, sociopathic narcissists and psychopathic nar narcissists appear, all right? They can never just go alone. Now, why couldn't, if you're going to do that to yourself, if you're going to unalive yourself, God forbid, but if you choose to do that, why you got to take the kids with you? Why couldn't you drop them off where you found them? Why do you always have to be so selfish because that's the communal narcissist? That's the, the narcissist thing. They have to do maximum damage. They didn't have to take these kids with them. All right. So they claim that the crash uh, claimed the lives of both uh, women as well as their six adopted children. That are nothing but the devil. Marcus 19, Hannah 16, Devante 15, Abigail. So this is Marcus and uh, Devante, I think, or either Marcus and uh, Jeremiah. All right. Um, Devante 15, Abigail and Jeremiah. Oh, it was a set of twins or maybe, but these were both 14. They might not have been twins, but both of them were 14 and Sierra 12. Marcus, Abigail and Jeremiah were found at the scene of the crash. Sierra's body was discovered two weeks later. Hannah's body has never been recovered, but a shoe containing a foot was found north of the crash site. Devante's body has never been recovered, though the police believe he died, um, along with his siblings. All right. Um, see, this is what they do. So this lady, um, this lady was the heart. And I don't have a picture of her, but you can Google that Jennifer Hart, Jennifer and Abigail Hart. So this lady used this, used these children to appear as, as good, as both of them uh, to appear as good women. All right. And they had them, and it was like, you know, this this boy was hugging this police officer, and they thought he was, like, emotional. No, he was emotional because of, he, this was a cry for help. Does this look like, like a kid that just want to hug? This looks like a cry for help, all right? So this picture ended up uh, going uh, uh, viral, all right? But this is what they do. And so days before the crash, the Hart's children have been identified as potential victims of abuse and neglect. All right. Uh, Sarah Hart had pre previously pleaded guilty to domestic assault and uh, malicious punishment of a child in 2011 after admitting that she had struck one of her daughters, leaving visible bruising. Because one of the daughters, I forget, she was clearly the scapegoat. She was the one that was trying to speak out. She was the one to tell because the narcissist was trying to break that child. Whichever one they can't break is the one that gets the brunt of the abuse. So because the heat was on, anytime a narcissist is, is in danger of being exposed, they either want to take people out. All right. So this is why you have to be careful because some of these things are malignant. So they either want to take people out or they'll take out everybody else in the house. You, you can't play with these things. Do you understand me? All right. This is the things they'll do. Some of them will just slither away. And then there are some who are more psychopathic and sociopathic. All right. Um, it is. It's very sad. It's very sad. All right. So what are the signs of a religious or spiritual narcissist? 
They're hypocrites. They're liars. All right. They're cheaters. They're thieves. Okay. Now people may lie. That doesn't make you a liar. Somebody may cheat. That doesn't make you a cheater. Somebody may uh, uh, steal. That doesn't make you a thief. All right. But if you continue on in that thing, you don't continue on. You repent and you turn away from that thing. But a narcissist, a communal narcissist, a spiritual narcissist, a narcissist, period, this is how they go through life, all right? And they deliberately do things. And then they say things like, God knows my heart. Only God can judge me, all right? They have people who claim to be Christians but don't live like one. If you claim to be part of an organization and you are not, you are not honest. People will get more mad at you for claiming to be a part of a sorority. If you part, if you claim to be part of a sorority fraternity and uh, you are not, don't you know they will come after you? Don't you know if you claim to be a part of the military and then you put on a military uniform and then later they find out that you are not that and you walking around with with you know army uh, medals and stuff? That's called stolen valor. All right. People will get more at you for doing that than they will for you being uh, claiming to be a Christian. You, They wear the clothes. They wear they They know the dialect. All right. But their hearts are not right. It's stolen valor. All right. So what are the signs of a cult? I'm going to talk about uh, Warren Jeffs here in a little bit. All right. Secrecy, control. All right. You can only affiliate with those in the cult. It, it's shunned for you to, you know, affiliate with other people outside of of the of the group. OK, you, you really can't have any other. Mm -mm, mm -mm, they don't like that. All right. They don't like that. That's a cult. Y'all remember uh, Warren Jess? I'm going to talk about him in a second. A cult. Jim Jones, a cult. All right. These are cults and there are modern day cults as well. OK. All right. Uh, they start to look and dress alike and they start to dress as the leader wants them to look. Women start to look like Little House on the Prairie, Laura Ingle. Don't you know women in the Bible were beautiful? They wore fine linens and they were regal and they wore gold. Now they want you to look homely. They want you to look like uh, little, little Laura Ingle on Laura, uh, Little House on the Prairie. I think not. All right. So religion makes everyone look alike. That's that's bondage. God made us all unique. Religion wants y'all all to look alike. Look alike. Look alike. Why did God make us unique if he wanted you, us, me to look like you? He don't want me looking like you. I look like me. All right? So if you report the abuse, these are some more signs. If you report abuse, no one bats an eye. Or they defend, they defend the abuse and the abuser. Or they have no discernment. All right? So I always say the system is not there to protect you. They are there to protect that system. This is a narcissistic family. A narcissistic family is similar to a cult. It's similar to a mob, to the mafia. It's the same thing. A dysfunctional family, dysfunctional church. And a lot of times, a lot of people go straight from a dysfunctional family right into, um, uh, you know, a cult. Because they, they're under that same spirit. It's the same spirit. All right. So a cult is familiar to them. All right. Um, their dysfunction, uh, the dysfunctional religious cult of do false doctrine. All right. And they preach another Jesus. They put a, they put a lot of truth with a little bit of lies. All right. All right. And they'll throw, they'll throw you out. They'll excommunicate you. If you make too much noise or you do something that they don't like. All right. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. They outcast you. If you want to leave, if you want to leave, uh, if you've outgrown the space, you should be free to leave that space right? You should be free to leave that space, all right? Not in these, not in a cult, all right? They'll out outcast you. If you, if you are here and there is, you're out of spiritual ICU, and you, look, bye. God bless you on your journey. I assume that God has greater work for you. No, not in a cult. Oh, they'll get mad if you try to leave. Mm -mm. Try to leave a cult. See what happens. They'll send somebody after you. All right. Uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses. All right. And then if they mention the leader's name, it's all about the leader. I've seen pastors who talk more like uh, Geno Jenkins. I've seen his people talk more about him than they do Jesus. You better wake up. You better wake up. That's anybody. Do you understand me? They mentioned the members, the, the pastor's names more than they mentioned Jesus. Well, pastor said, well, bishop said, 
You don't go into church and leave your brain. Do you understand me? There has to be checks and balances. There has to be uh, uh, checks and balances in the church. Scientology, all right? Scientology is another one, right? Celebrity, right? God didn't cre create these bodies for one man or one woman to be a rock star. It has to be checks and balances. This is why God made the five-fold ministry, all right? Then there's group thing, okay? If, if somebody don't think like that, then, you know, out with you and it's not because you're speaking in error it's because you know you're going against the grain okay and then no one is willing to speak up about abuse or something that's going on everybody just sit back and act like they don't see it they act like they don't see that the pastor's sleeping with the women in the church they act like they don't see you know the pastor's wife is, is sleeping with one of the members they act like they don't see it hear no evil see no evil say no evil we just gonna sit up under this organization nobody say because they're, nobody's perfect nobody's perfect no we're not perfect but certain things we just don't do do you understand that certain things we just don't do all right and then there's lots of rumors okay lots of rumors all right as a leader uh, all right and oh somebody said something about celebrity culture you don't allow that right uh x you don't allow that you as a leader you don't allow people to exalt you over yahweh that's your responsibility as a leader, as a commission member in the body of Christ. We don't allow people to exalt us over Christ. You're in a danger zone. We give honor, but we don't exalt any man or woman over God. All right. That's how public angels, private devils are created. Do you understand me? All right. And then when you see people doing that, you correct that. All right. You correct that. So if you see those things and you just sit up under, you're a part of the problem. All right. You're 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 a weak, docile, indoctrinated sheep. And it's time to come up out of her. All right. It's time to come out. All right. So spiritual abuse. All right. Any attempt to exert power and control over someone using religion, faith or beliefs, it can be spiritual abuse. All right. So spiritual abuse can happen in uh, religious organizations or even in personal relationships where somebody uses the Bible, somebody uses scripture, somebody uses religion. All right. They can use your culture. All right. They can use denominations. All right. To to keep you in bondage. All right. It works both ways. It can be a congregation um, that can do that to pastors. All right. It can be uh, leaders um, who do that to uh, uh, to their members. OK, and then in the body, members can do it to one another. So all of none of it is of God. OK, so it is psychological and emotional and abuse. All right. And it, and it deeply impacts people who experience it. Why? Because when you go into a church, when you go into a religious or spiritual organization or whatever, you think that you found people who are who are of the same mind. You think that you found people that you can serve God with. And then when they show you something else, not that you're expecting them to be perfect because there is no perfect organization, but at the same time, there should not be backstabbing. There should not, you know, things that just are out of order. All right. And then if the head, if the headship is crooked, if the headship is not right, what do you think that body is doing? If your pastor is getting people pregnant, your pastor is always in a scandal, all right? If, if they're teaching an error, what do you think the body is going to be, all right? If you want to look, when I go into a, a store or something, when I see, look, um, you know, the the, the store, the, the, the workers are, are, you know, they just raggedy, then I know the leadership is raggedy. I, I know some there's some checks and balances. There's some things. All right. Because people are going to do what the headship allows them to do. All right. So you, you can always tell in the workplace the same thing If the work. If the leaders are raggedy, if the leaders are not checking up on and on, on, uh, uh, in, in holding, you know, certain values in place, then the workers are going to be raggedy. The place is going to be run amok. All right. That's what's going to happen. All right. But spiritual abuse can be very damaging. All right. It's manipulation. It's exploiting people. All right. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, Warren Jeffs, but these people, they're, the sun rose and shined on this man. And these people were being fed lies. They were indoctrinated. All right. It was censorship. They could not make decisions for themselves. It's secrecy and silence. You must shut up in order to get, go. You must go along to get along. 
All right, it's using scripture to hold people in bondage and that's wrong. God does not want you abused and abuse is sin. They refuse to call out abuse as sin, but will love to tell you that God hates divorce. But why won't anybody tell you that you being abused is sin? All right. So remember that when religion is used to keep you in an unholy and an ungodly alliance with Jezebel. All right. Remember that God hates divorce, but he loves you more than the institution of marriage. He loves you. He'll pull you up out of that family. He'll pull you up out of that job. Do you understand me? All right. He'll pull you up out of these places or he'll show you how to deal with that. All right. But it's not uncommon for survivors to enter cults or communities filled with narcissists. All right. Uh, let me show you this picture. All right. So do y'all remember um, uh, Warren Jeffs? Uh, Jasmine told me about this show and I watched the, um, the episodes. And uh, so the Fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints, FLDS, it's a branch off from uh, the Mormon church. All right. So uh, Warren Jeff succeeded uh, Rulon Jeffs, who ran the cult for about 15 years prior to 2002. All right. Um, uh, Warren Jeff's son said uh, Warren controlled everything from what you ate to the things you wore. And if he could, even the things that you could think. All right. <laughs> that's some, that's what his son said. All right. Uh, he said his father wouldn't allow music, Internet, movies, candy, more anything. Yeah. So they, they just don't want you to live, period. He created an environment where we were only exposed to things that he wanted us to be exposed by. He had control over the way that we saw the outside world in every aspect. Um, his son claimed that when he was 14, trigger warning, that his father, 14, accused him um, and other FLDS boys of wanting to have um, you know, interaction with some of the wives. All right. So he grew up, the son grew up having moms that were 15 years old. So um, according to former U.S. prosecutor um, who participated, this is a documentary, all right, called uh, Keep Sweet, Keep Sweet and Pray and Obey. Because that's what the women were taught. Keep sweet. They couldn't get mad. You know, oh, that's religion. You can't get mad. You just keep sweet and you submit and you obey the prophet. That's what he called the prophet. He was the prophet, right? All right. The, the prophet. Everything revolves around the prophet, not God. This part, not God, the prophet, what the, what the prophet wanted. All right. So he has 78 wives. 24 of those wives were under age. So Warren Jeffs is now serving uh, a life sentence, which he should be um, in uh, Palestine, uh, Texas. These people are so wicked. Do you hear me? All right. But it's still believed that he runs. He's still doing it. They don't change. You know, they go to they go to prison and then, you know, they're able to even do it even more. So uh, he's still doing the same things uh, in prison. He sure is. He, he ain't stop. You know, they just they run these things through prison and, and different uh, whatever organizations they go into. R. Kelly will be doing the same thing. OK, Um so, and then his daughter, I saw the interview with his daughter, where his daughter was saying, now this man had all these wives, right? But they weren't enough because nothing is ever enough for a bottomless demon. Do you understand me? Demons are, are vapid pits of bottomless nothingness. So they are perverted. All right. Narcissism usually comes with a spirit of perversion. I, I don't know if you know that. Most, nar look, I saw uh, somebody say, well, not all narcissists are pedophiles. Narcissists and pedophilia go together a lot of times. Now, I'm not saying all of them. I'm not ever saying all of somebody is the one way. But narcissism and pedophilia, narcissists and perversion go together. So whether they do it with children or whoever, they usually have a spirit of perversion on them. Do you understand me? Most of the people that molest children are narcissists or narcissistic. You have to be very narcissistic to uh, abuse a child, to abuse a person. Do you understand me? Get your head out of the sand. All right. These people are wicked. They are tears amongst the wheat. So he, these women weren't enough. They weren't enough. So he turned to his own daughter at the age of eight, I believe. 
Do you understand me? This is wicked. And this is the stuff that is going on that people want to hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil. And how, how do these people do these things? They do these things because nobody is willing to stand up against the system. And then if you stand up against the system, they're going to outcast you. They're going to make you look like you're crazy. I'm willing to look like the crazy one. Do you understand me? Because this is not right. I have righteous indignation when people, when these women, she told her mother and her mother did nothing. How many of us told our mothers and our mothers did nothing? Oh, it was just me. It was just me. It was just me. That's what happens. All right. This is what religion does. They're so caught up in their idolatry. People have made such an idol out of marriage that their goal is to be a wife. That's all. That's all it is. Now they groom these women. Your goal is to be a wife and nothing more. What if God has another plan for you? People have made an idol out of marriage and it's disgusting. It's not even, it, we love marriage. We love covenant, but not the way that these people are able to use it. Not everybody, not everybody is going to be a wife. Not everybody is going to be a husband. And you have people literally dying inside of demonic covenants. And they are going, they, they, are, they are told they are going to hell if they divorce or if they remarry. They are told to just, just bury your head down. You made a mistake and now you must spend the rest of your life paying for this mistake. No, God says, repent, turn away, go and sin no more. God is not cookie cutter. He'll tell you what to do about your situation. All right. And then some of these, uh, I know some churches, they separate the single women. Like you are an outcast if you're not married by 25, by 35. If you're a divorced woman, it's like you got a scarlet letter A on you. What if it's not God's will for them to marry? What? Are you less than a woman? Are you less than a woman? No. Who told you that? This is what this religion does, all right? And then the men can go on these polygamous relationships. They will have these women and all kind of things. How did this man do this? Because people didn't, didn't say anything. Because people were groomed and conditioned to think that this was okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. Look at them. Look at these women brainwashed, all with their hair looking a mess, just and they don't know any better. They think that that's normal. You think that it's normal for for a man to want to uh, bring somebody into your bed with you. You 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 wake up, sister. Wake up. Now he got you in polygamy. Wake up. And, and brothers are doing it too. You not enough. She got to go out there and get another husband. She got you in polyamory, poly. Oh uh, look, poly this, poly this. Look, that ain't gone. That ain't gone. Do you understand me? You are enough. And if you are not enough, that's not your person. Do you understand me? I wish somebody would. I'm, I, I'm out. You understand me? But this is what religion does. And these people were, oh, if you watch the docu documentary, it was sad. And they, and they were told basically that they were going to hell if they didn't submit to these men. If, they, if these 13-year-olds didn't marry these old crusty, rusty, dusty demons with these men who are 60, 50, 40 years old marrying these teenagers, taking their virginity, and they're told that, that if they don't do this, that they're going to hell, that, that this is their way, this is their way their life is supposed to go. No. No, no. And then it, it wasn't enough. Her dad now has to turn to her, had to turn to his own daughters. And some of them do it to their own sons. Oh, we don't want to talk about it because it makes the church look bad. Because it makes the church look bad. I'm not saying all the churches, but we got to be willing to talk about these things. People are dying inside of these 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 demonic covenants. And we want to act like it's okay. This is not okay. And I'm not going to act like it is. I'm not going to act like it is. Stop making an idol out of marriage. God loves you more than marriage. Do you understand me? Do you hear what I'm saying? So these narcissists are able to go undetected. This is what covert narcissists do, male or female. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Now they And, and covert narcissists are slick. They're very selective. All right. So they don't abuse. That's right. God going to deal with it all. Yes, they are. They are perverted predators. Yes, they are. That, that is. They are. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. 
right mm -hmm. right 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 they sure do yeah amen all right so these covert narcissists they don't abuse everyone so they make it seem like they get along with everyone else but you nobody else see what i see oh it must be me they are tricky to detect they appear humble and sometimes vulnerable and super sweet and sappy like too good to be true and they hide behind a nice mask and behind your back they'll sell the most vile things ask me how i know public angels private devils all right and some of you are living with these people some of you are living with these people who are on every committee at church look on every committee at church every time the doors open some of them are pastors some of them are members some of them are teachers some of them are preachers all right and this is what they're doing then they go home and raise hell do you understand me amen it says just as it's coming thus said the lord behold i am against the shepherds i will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock hallelujah justice is coming amen thank you for that seed may god return that back to you over and abundantly that's right he's against these shepherds they're leading sheep to slaughter her they're leading people into idolatry making it sound like they're worshiping god you're not worshiping god when you work when you follow these leaders they preach another jesus they have you in idolatry and you don't even know it it's all by design it takes longer to detect a cowardly covert, especially one in church. I'll never sit up and say, oh, yeah, I can recognize one. No, I can't. All right. The, and, and the tricky thing is you are if you're not around them, if you're around them, then you can pick them up. But most of the time, we're not around these people for any lengths of time. Let's be honest. All right. But being close to someone makes you feel like you know them. Oh, I know her. I know sister such and such. I know sister sorry i know brother barracuda do you or did you just spend time with him on clubhouse or did you just spend time with him on youtube anybody can wear a face for two hours all right it takes longer to detect some of these people especially in the body all right and then sometimes they are self-deprecating and self-loathing and they seem so vulnerable and oh, nobody likes me and you know I just bake cakes and I told you it's that cheetah and wonder woman. It's that cheetah and wonder woman. Cheetah, you know, cheetah comes up to you just uh, hey sis, how you doing? It will stab you in your back. Do you understand me? Don't sis me to death. All right, they capitalize on your compassion. This is why we all must be careful in this community. I told somebody here is a narcissist. I hope, ooh, I hope you burn up in the inside. I hope you burning up. Click off, click off. All right. They are they are like snakes sizing you up to see how they can get in. All right. Passive aggressive, seething inwardly. When all look, it look, you you piss them off. Oh, they're gonna get you back. They want to get you back. They won't say anything in your face. Hey, won't come to you, won't come to you because they cowards. All right, they'll go to everybody about you but you won't come to me. You got a problem with me, but you go to everybody else. You a coward. You a coward. You a keyboard coward. All right. If I have a problem with you, I'm coming. I'm coming straight to you. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Ask somebody, you better ask somebody. Check my record. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. All right. I ain't coming to everybody but you. Messy. Messy, Monica. All right. But they don't forget anything. They have memories like elephants. Right, man. Bake you cookies and stab you in your bed. Girl, don't eat that lady's cookies. Don't eat the cookies. Don't eat their food. You think somebody just don't eat their food, man. Don't eat it. Just pass it up. Pass it up. Don't don't eat it. You know somebody's a co or, or not. You suspect them. We don't we don't diagnose, but we do discern. You know somebody a little jealous. Don't it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. I'm not eating your cookie. That's how you going to go into the bathroom. Look, have stuff coming out the front and the back. Mm -mm. Nope, I ain't eating your stuff. I ain't, I ain't coming to your cookout anyway, but I'm certainly not eating your food. Not I. All right. Hello, Megan. Thank you. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Amen. All right. So they have memories like an elephant. They don't forget anything. They're just waiting for the right opportunity. They have memories like elephants. 
the narcissists have demonic recall. Do you hear me? They have demonic recall. I told you, I used to wonder how, how could they compartmentalize all the different people? I used to look at uh, with my uh, the sociopath, right? How did he compartmentalize all these women? And I was, you know, I saw notes in his phone and different things. All them demons helped them to remember. Them demons, there's no way to remember all these people, all these people that they do things to. Oh, it's demonic recall. They can recall everything that you do and none of what they did. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he did. I don't know why she doesn't like me. I don't know why he doesn't like me anymore. Oh, you know. They know. They too busy playing the victim. Too busy playing the victim. All right? So trust yourself. Even if nobody, even if you stand alone, stand on what you know and what the Holy Spirit is showing you. That's in regards to me. That's in regards to any, any even with the witch. If you want to follow the witch, follow the witch down. Follow the witch down the yellow brick road. Follow it to your heart's content. Do you understand me? Don't make me know. Never mind. I I, just, I gave you the warning. You do it which what thou willst. All right. So trust yourself. All right. They uh, covert narcissists get their supply differently than overt. So overts are more uh, uh, pa or aggressive. All right. I was married to an uh, overt narcissist, so it was easier you know once that mask slips but with the covert narcissist it's a little it's a little different I, i'd rather deal with the overt than a covert honestly all right um but but both always have plausible deniability with anything they do it's the innocent act but and then they're always watching you they can't stand you but they watch you you can't stand somebody and you watching them you're a fan boo you're a fan. You're a fan and you don't even know it. You're a fan. They president of your fan club. They president of your fan club. Yes, they are. And they don't even realize it. All right. Um, let me see. And if you don't give them the attention they feel they deserve from you, they'll jab you in covert ways. All right. They want you to feel, they want everybody to feel as if they are the nicest people when they are fakest of the fake. All right, they'll stab you right in your back because they are public angels, private devils, right? Don't let them pray for you, especially that's that's what I wish was wanting the people to come back in her back channel so she could pray for them while she was P-R-E-Y on them. Don't let, don't let them. I did a, a VIP message on that, a, a couple of them. I'm talking about that. So watch those if you're a VIP member, all right? And then some of them are womanizing schemers. Church congregations are magnets. For these people, all right? They are magnets. They love coming in the church. They love it. They love coming in the church. They love it, some of them, all right? And if you are not around these people for uh, any length of time, you may not ever see the mask slip. Really, truly, let's think about this. Coverts play their role very well. It gives people a sense of, I know her, I know him. Do you? Do you really know them? Do you really know people like you think you do? We don't. I don't know why we, are, oh, I know her. No, you don't. You don't know me unless you talk to me outside of here. You don't know me. You know of me. You don't know me. I don't know you. I don't know what you do when you go home. I don't know who you are. I know of you. But familiarity, people, when they're familiar with you, they feel like they know you. That's why you see uh, people kill uh, or hurt their spouses or do something to their children. And the neighbors are like, well, they didn't seem to be like that. Well, if all you do is wave to them, how would you, how would you know? You don't know. They seem like such a nice family. He and her knocking up her head at night. Ask me how I know. And from the outside, they seem like an and from the outside. Anybody can seem nice. Anybody can seem nice. Narcissists love appearing as nice. I told you I ain't nice. I'm kind, but I ain't nice. Thank you, uh, Balance Plans. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Amen. So these people are talented at shifting blame and getting others to take the heat and they draw away from their, their flaws. All right. They don't, they don't like vulnerability. They don't like it. You don't, you won't really ever know their story. They don't like it. All right. They do things in secrecy. 
All right. Um, and it gives you the feeling, you know, something is off. You is something that you just can't quite put your finger on with this person. And there's an over, there's a lack of transparency. All right. All right. And then around this person, people walk on eggshells. OK, they surround themselves with yes men and yes women who will turn a blind eye and somehow benefit. They surround themselves. If a narcissist is around you, they benefit from you in some kind of way. All right. It's an unholy alliance. Fake and phony. Fake is a phony. Girl, mm, get ready, get ready. I never dealt with a narc woman before until recently. Once I cashed, uh, cashed her out, she ran off like a one. <laughs> Girl. Them female narcissists is nothing to play with because women narcissists can go undetected longer, it seems like. You know what I mean? And then the way society does women where women can't be held accountable for anything. So it's, it's like if you talk about it, well, oh, no, no, women will come after you. You understand me? I'm all about accountability. No, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If you're right, you're right. I'm with you when you're right. I'm wrong. I'm gone when you're wrong. Do you understand that? Keep preaching, woman of God. I'm new here and already blessed. We are called to stand in truth, not cower, but stand. Ephesians 6 and 13, having done all to stand. Amen, Rebecca. And thank you for being here. Thank you for your seat. And may God return that and bless you. And keep up, keep on coming back. Go watch the older ones. Amen. God bless you. All right. So these people surround themselves with yes. Are you a yes man? Do you go alone to get them? Are you an Ahab? Because the nar you a narcissist dream. Do you understand me? All right. So these people benefit some kind of way. That's right. Be careful when they team up. They and they will. They'll team up to take you out. All right. So these are the people that narcissists love. All right. You remember uh Jim Jones? How did Jim Jones get those people to drink that Kool-Aid? How do y'all ever think about this? How did Jim Jones convince over 900 people to drink the cyanide Kool-Aid. How? How did a so-called man of God convince 900 people to drink the Kool-Aid? If your pastor told you to drink cyanide, drink the Kool-Aid, would you? Some of y'all would. Oh, yes, Pastor. Yes, yes. I'll oh, drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, the government's after us. I'll oh, drink the Kool-Aid. How did Jim Jones convince these people? How did he convince them to move from California to uh, Jonestown? All right, how did he do this? This wasn't a simple feat. These people were in search of something. You, you have to be careful when you're in search of something. When you're in search of something, all right, and you don't go to God to get it, Satan will give you what you think you want. Do you understand me? You have to be careful going into buildings. You got to be careful going into organizations. All that glitters is not gold. How did Jim Jones convince over 900 people to drink cyanide? Religion. How? How did he convince these? Oh, he wouldn't hurt a fly, would he? He wouldn't hurt anybody. Look at the robe. Look at the children. How? How did he convince these people? How? Do you have, have you ever wondered that? All these people wasn't just foolish people, children. How did he convince men? Same thing with Warren Jeffs. Oh, you men better watch out. Oh, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that. You men better watch out when you want power and you'll give your wife up. You'll give your wife up to a to the preacher. You'll give your daughters up to the preacher. You'll give your daughter. You'll give your daughter up. You'll give your son. You'll give your children. You'll let your children uh, sit up under this man. Sit up under this so-called prophet, so-called man of God. All right. So Jim Jones. All right. When when the when the heat, I don't know how many of you have saw they did a documentary on that. I saw that, too. All right. So people were beginning to their families when they moved to Jonestown and they start seeing. So they love bomb you to get you in the organization. Oh, it's all love. We just come here. We plant and we have a community and, you know, we do things together. You know what I mean? So the families of these people started being worried about them. 
So much so that uh, Congressman uh, Leo Ryan visited Jonestown. Sorry, I'm, I hate he did that. All right, visited Jonestown in November 1978. After checking out the settlement, Ryan, he was on his way getting in the helicopter. See, same thing. Can't you see the same thing? Just like with those uh, ladies with Jennifer Hart uh, and her wife, they were in fear of exposure. When a narcissist is about to get exposed, ooh, Buckle up, buttercup. Narcissists will do go to any lengths to remain in the shadows. A narcissist will do anything not to be exposed because demons, the demons that are inside of them, don't want other people to know the truth. So when Jennifer Hart was about to get exposed, when her children were telling on her uh, and her and her wife what they were doing, they went so far as to kill everyone else because that's what narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths do. Instead of owning up to what they do, they blame everyone else around them. Instead of Jim Jones saying, hey, Instead of these 900 people, children, women dying, take me. I'm responsible. No, they hide behind you. Your so-called shepherd pastor hides behind his own flock. You're a coward. What kind of man or woman of God hides behind the people? I don't know about you, but when I was in the army, leaders led from the front. We didn't lead from the back. We didn't put the the body at risk to save ourselves. We didn't, I don't know what kind of army that is. I don't know what kind of kind of uh, kind of congregation that is, where the where the leader is the one that that sits behind the people and pulls the strings like a puppet master. No, where the school that I'm from, leaders lead from the front. We don't lead from the rear. No. Oh. No, but these old sorry, janky uh, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. All right. So when the man, when uh, the congressman was about to get on the helicopter and, and then they shot him, they shot the helicopter up. All right. And then following that, you know, because the heat is on now. The heat is on. They know the congressman. Everybody going to find out about it. So then Jones said, because he was against the government, he thought the government, there's some truth there. All right. But, you know, they go too far with it. So instead of copping to what he did, he told his congregation to drink the cyanide lace Kool-Aid. How many of you would drink your pastor's Kool-Aid, your false sheep's Kool-Aid? All right. And then they said, start, start with the children. Do you drinking cyanide? Do you know what that does to your insides? And these parents said, here, child, go ahead and drink this. You know what fear those children must have had inside them as they lay there dying on the ground? All right. And then him, he's, he didn't even drink the Kool-Aid. Ha! He got these people to drink the Kool-Aid and he didn't even drink it because that's what cowards do. They fool you. They get you to do the things that they would not do themselves. So he was found with a gunshot to the head. So they said either he did it or he, uh, his nurse did it. All right. And then she killed herself or something like that. But either way, he didn't drink the Kool-Aid that he commanded everybody else to drink. So the narcissist, just think about this. The narcissist convinces you to do the most horrendous things. Mm, let's go here right quick. Let's go here right quick. All right. And they make it sound normal. Why? Why do they make it sound normal? Why can they make it? How can you convince 900 people to drink cyanide? Because it's the devil talking to you. Think about the things that you did that you won't tell anybody about. Think of the things that you don't talk about, the things that you dare not say aloud. Because the devil was in your ear, a private uh, devil, a public angel was in your ear. Satan was in your ear. A manipulative, demonic, dusty Decepticon coerced you and was able to get you to do things outside of your character. Why? Because you were under a spell. You were under witchcraft. You were under demonic interference. And without the armor of God, without the knowledge of God, you didn't stand a chance. These people are wicked, public angels and private devils. How was he able to do this? 
How was Warren Jeff? How was the Church of Latter day Saints? How are Jehovah's Witnesses? How is radical Islam? How are these people, even in Christianity, how are they able to convince people that a God who brings life to kill themselves? How? Because it's the spirit of Murdoch, Murdoch, and Molech, and Baal, and Beelzebub. And unfortunately, it's alive and well. So not only were these men, and these were men in these congregations, these not only were these men, <laughs> these men were some sick cowards. I'm sorry, I said it. These cowards turned in all of these places, here today too, turned their own wives over to these men. You know why? Because they are just as sick. And the devil knows, listen to me here, the devil knows you. The devil knows what you won't say. The devil knows when you want power. The devil knows when you want control. The devil knows when you want women to submit to you. The devil knows when your heart is not healed. The devil knows your heart. And they, he knows what you don't say. And he knows your weakness. These men wanted dominance. They want control. And the devil who masquerades as angel of, of light appeals to their most innermost desires so much so that they will sell their own children out. Oh, these men, all right, with Jim Jones and all these other places, their, Jim Jones started sleeping with their wives in the church, in the church, in the church. He could have any, he could have the men and the women that he wanted, because most of the times they be bisexual anyway. Most of the narcissists are bisexual anyway. They don't want to tell you that. They got that bathroom as below as yeah, they got that bathroom spirit. They don't tell you that though, do they? Not all of them, a great deal of them, because they don't care when you need supply, you'll go to anybody, male or female, child to get it. Watch your children. Watch your children. When you have children with a narcissist, you better watch your children. That's all I got to say. You better watch them. All right. Thank you, Danielle. Amen. The sermon is a must these days. May God continue to bless you above and beyond for your boldness for the kingdom of our heavenly father. You know who is truly uh, of the kingdom of God. Amen. Who sits on the highest throne. Amen. God bless you. May God return that to you uh, over and above measure. The sermon is a must, Danielle. It's a must. We can't go over, over the five signs and the 10 ways. You have to have discernment. The serpent is crafty. All right. The serpent is craftier and they get craftier. So you have men who will sell out their wives and children because they're scared. They're scared. They're cowards on the inside. All right. And women are just as bad. Some women are just as bad. Not all men, not all women. Some are just as bad. The women are so brainwashed that they will allow their own men and husbands and boyfriends in their homes, knowing that they are sexually deviant. Knowing that they are sexually deviant, knowing that they've done things to their children, knowing that they sit around watching P.O.R.N. When you sit around watching that all day, oh, you well on your way. You well on your way. You have an Asmodeus. You have demons inside of you. And then your daughter walking around there, you better, your son too, you better be careful. Women too. Women that look, these women will sleep with your husband too. Sleep with your boyfriend. They don't care when they have these demons in them. These people don't care. These people will turn their own children over to men twice their age. Modern day Molech. Modern day Molech. And this woman of smile and service knowing her children are being groomed and abused at home. But see, Satan knows what she won't say. See, she wants security and protection so bad that she's willing to sit at the devil's feet to get it. She's in idolatry with her husband or he's in idolatry with his wife so bad that they're both willing to sacrifice their children to get what they want. 
to stay in the community, to stay in this Ichabod church, to stay in these communities so they won't be outcasted. They are cowards and they're willing to sacrifice their children to modern day Molex. Yeah, I said it. All right. So this woman, she'll appear so saintly in church. She appears as an angel to her children, but she's nothing more than a cowardly Ahab submitted to a dusty demonic Jezebel, an unholy alliance. So she sacrifices her own children to stay in that relationship because when you're in idolatry, you always have to make a sacrifice to your God. You always have to make a sacrifice to your demonic idol. All right. And if it's the kids, so be it. So be it. God says, and then they'll use the Bible to justify staying in an unholy alliance. Because God hates divorce. So I'll subject my children and myself to abuse because I don't love myself. And I don't really know how to love my children because if I did, I would protect them. Love is more than just feeding someone. Love is protection. Mothers, fathers, do you understand me? All right. So when your children turn, when her children turn into Jezebel's or they are abused and misused and they want nothing to do with her, she'll act like the victim, like she always pretends to be. All right. This is what these people do in these churches, in these Ichabod churches. Yes, it is. Thank you, lyricists. I know this might be too much for y'all. It may be too much. It's okay. Lyra says, thank you. God bless you, sis. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Amen. 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 Well, you had a good one. My mother protected me and my sister. She was broken, but she had character. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yes, when you have character. Yes. And I understand some of them are, are coerced and brainwashed and abused. Don't have children. Don't have children, okay? All right. So how do these public angels and private devils fool so many? Because people are uh, gullible and naive and something we just don't know. And we want to believe that people, that all people are good, but not all people are good. Not all people are good. All right. Even in the church, we expect them to be who they say they are. But even Jesus told us this was not be the case. A false Jesus was uh, was presented all right. People's desires understand this is why uh, we must go through spiritual ICU. We must allow ourselves to go through this process so we don't end up drinking cyanide, spiritual cyanide or uh, <laughs> otherwise. All right. Or physical cyanide. We don't end up drinking the devil's juice, narc juice. All right. And your desires must change. All the way a narcissist got in was because of our wounds and because of our innermost desires. Our hearts must be changed to be in alignment with God. If you want to follow and be va validated by people so badly, by your pastor, by wolves in sheep's clothing, you'll run smack dab into a narcissistic cult leader and a pimp in the pulpit. These people commit their lives to what they believe is a worthy cause. They have committed their lives to these men. They are in idolatry and they don't even realize it because it's covered up with scripture. And they have made a false prophet, false prophets, all right, false teachers, false shepherds who are mere men. They have made them to be God so much so that they're common sense and they've been brainwashed to believe that they must go through this man to get to God. The only man that you have to go through to get to God is Yeshua. That's the only one. That's the only one. So it's an antichrist system, even if they preach Jesus. I don't know. This might be too heavy for y'all. All right. Even if they preach Jesus, it's preparing you to submit to the antichrist. If some of these preachers told their congregations to drink Kool-Aid, cyanide, Kool-Aid, most of them would. If Eddie Long told Newberg to drink cyanide, you best believe they would. They would. They would. They would. They defend these people. They defend them like no other. Do you understand me? 
If Jen O'Jigan stole his congregation to drink cyanide, they would. These people defend the inconceivable and the unconscionable. The people want leadership. So God gives you over to a king that you deserve. A whole killer clown in the church circus. A public devil and a private angel. And many seek refuge in the communal and religious circles, not understanding they are breeding grounds for narcissistic cult leaders. And they say a lot of good. A lot of good. You think Jim Jones was able to, and, and Warren Jess was able to convince these people because they said all bad things? No, they said some good things. They said some good things. You think that those uh, ladies who adopted these kids, you think in public she showed, they showed their face? No, they probably did some, some good things for these children on the, on the surface, but behind closed doors, there's something else. So these people infiltrate because people are drawn to them. They are charismatic. They are charming. They mix a, a lot of truth with a little bit of lies and a little leaven leavens the whole lump. All right. And they cause chaos behind closed doors. They allow abuse to go on in their assemblies. All right. And then people got to sit back and, and the congregation will defend this foolishness. All right. This is a the wheat from the tear. A wheat from the tear is being is is uh, the wheat is being separated from the tear. Do you understand me? That's what's happening. All right. Signs of the wheat. Let's examine the wheat before we get out of here. All right. The wheat and the tear look identical with from far away, don't they? Signs of the wheat. The wheat is humble. It's wheat. Uh, when you're in God, you're submissive to God. You love, you are empathic, you have fruits of the spirit, kindness, meekness, you are a lover of truth. You are truth tellers, you are honest, you are brave, you are bold. Sign of the tear, Leviathan, false humility, all right? False humility, duality. They appear as angels of light. They are cold, they are cold, all right? They appear kind, but they are cold in the inside. They lack, they have a lack of empathy, lack of remorse. All right. No conscience or seared conscience. All right. They are lovers of themselves. They bear the fruits of the devil. All right. Uh, envy, wrath, jealous, lovers of selves, gossipers, bears false witness. Oh, bears false witness. Well, you got to be careful with that. Gets others to bear false witness. Arrogant. Say, the terror, say and look, you know. They say things and they look like the wheat, but behind closed doors is public angels, private devils. And then people who, who are in agreement with them, don't judge, don't expose them. Only God can judge me. Shut up, Jezebel. You in submission to Jezebel. If you scared, say you scared. Silent, Susan. Say you're scared. Now, tears are tricky because they preach false humility. But inside, inside, they are full of egotism. They are full of egoism. They, are, they introduce you and elevate themselves. And it's subtle. Love your neighbor. Not love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor. See, because they always give you half the scripture. They give you half the scripture. Love your neighbor. Not love your neighbor as yourself. So that's what a, that truth. With, they don't give you the rest of it. They preach forgiveness, but not repentance. Give me the whole thing. Give me the whole thing. In order for God, for God to forgive us, we must repent. Why won't you tell me the whole scripture? Honor your father and mother. They love these are the scriptures they love. Never the scriptures about causing your children to stumble. Why don't they give you the whole thing? Why don't they give you Proverbs 22 and 6? Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Why don't you give me the whole thing? Why don't you give me Luke 17 and two? It would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck to be thrown in the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Narcissistic parents. Oh, you gonna get, you gonna get it. You gonna get it. Disobedient children too. All right, but you gonna get it. All right. You gonna get it. All right, but I don't tell you that. So they only, they, they, it's, it's, it's subtle. All right. It's subtle. They give you a little bit. All right. And then wheat, wheat bowls over a holy. All right. It bows over. It submits to God. The tear is proud. 
Leviathan, it stands up arrogantly. Can you see the difference now? Can you recognize a wheat from a tear? Can you recognize they come up together? They sit in the same congregation. They look alike from afar, but oh, one of these things is not like the other. All right. How come the pride, the public angels, private devils never read the scripture in totality? God hates divorce. Not ever a spiritual covenant. Not ever is there a such thing as demonic covenants. Not ever. That's why you have to know God for yourself. All right. You must know sheep from goats. Goats want to control you. Goats bring you up in fear of them. Goats become your God. All right. Goats want to become greatest of all time. Goat, goat wants to become your God. So they conveniently leave out other scriptures and they drill these scriptures into your head. See, a tear is tricky, but if you pay attention, they tell you who they are. They tell you, they tell us, do you understand me? A goat is worldly, all right? Sheep, uh, uh, goats are carnal minded. Sheep's mind are stayed on God, do you understand me? So you have to recognize a wheat from a tear, all right? A sheep from a goat. What distinguishes a sheep from a goat is, is, is Jesus' message in totality. The full gospel of Jesus Christ is not cherry picking. All right. So we got to be able to understand. We must be under, uh, able to understand and discern which is which. Can you recognize a sheep from a goat? Can you recognize the wheat from the tear? All right. And then in the physical sense, you know, I was reading this and they keep the sheep separate from the goat. <laughs> if sheep and I read this on the internet, if sheep and goats fight, they can damage each other's head and cause serious injury. So it's essential to keep them separated to avoid such situations. Another reason sheep and goat are kept separately is to limit the transmission of diseases. Ah, to limit transmission of demons. Yes. So in the spiritual sense, it is best that you are separated from goats so you don't get Satan's sexually or Satan's transmitted demons, which is narcissists. Narcissists are the physical embodiment of Satan in human form. Do you understand me? They have all of his characteristics. They are goats. They are tares. They are in these communities and they are here to cause chaos and confusion and to derail you from God's purpose for your life. Do you understand me? You got to understand what a narcissist comes to do. A narcissist didn't come to play with you. Do you understand me? You remember Cain and Abel, all right? Cain was a, or Abel was a, uh, a sheep, all right? Uh, sh or I'm sorry, Abel was a, a sheep herder, a shepherd, all right? He represented the wheat. And then Cain, his brother, re represented the goat, the tear. It's all, it's in all throughout the Bible, who's a wheat and who's a tear. They came up together. They came up from one woman's womb, but one woman's womb can produce two nations, all right? One woman's womb can produce a goat and can produce a tear. Do you understand me? One woman's womb can birth an Is uh, Ishmael and an Isaac. Hallelujah. One woman's womb. Do you understand me? One field can produce wheat in the tear, but it's harvest time. Harvest time is no different today. Cain couldn't stand Abel and his sacrifice. And instead of him submitting and doing things as God wanted, he was jealous of his own brother and killed him. Narcissists are the same way. They are the tares. You must be able to recognize the tares. We and grow. We and tear grow up in the same house and can be totally different. I grew up in the house with a narcissistic brother. All right. From the outside, we look close. From the outside, we look the same. From the outside, but God came in and said, It's harvest time. It's harvest time. I'm separating a wheat from a tear. From the outside, we look the same. Nobody could tell the difference until harvest time came up and it was time to separate the goat from the sheep. It was time to separate the wheat from the tear. God allowed that thing to happen. It was time and it's harvest time. Sheep are being separated from goat. All right. Hallelujah. Isaac and Ishmael. All right. How do you, and then how do you test the fruit? 
all right? Many people seek refuge in these communities, all right? We got to understand that these are breeding grounds, all right? We are in the last days. God, uh, Jesus already told us these would happen. So it's not to put you in fear. It's that you will be alerted, that you have your discernment on high. All right, that you test people's spirit before you get close to them, that you understand what time the times you discern the times. All right, John, first John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. We are in a time where there is an apostate church. All right. I talked about this in my other messages. Go watch them on the four dangers of the four wall church. All right. We live in a, a time where uh, many of these churches, not all of them, there is an ecclesia. That's different. That's different. All right. Don't try to lump them all. That's not what I'm saying. All right. First Timothy four and one says the spirit says that in latter times, the spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. They will follow false doctrine. They will follow new age. They will follow Islam. They will follow Buddha. They will follow polytheism. They will follow Jehovah Witness. They will follow Kundalini. They will follow witchcraft. They are were seduced by doctrines of demons. Are you being seduced by a doctrine of demons hallelujah hallelujah and hebrews 6 and 4 6 uh, says it is impossible for those who have been enlightened who have tasted the heavenly gift who have shared in the holy spirit who have tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the coming age and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance Ooh, to their loss they are crucifying the son of god all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace mm. Mm -mm. it's impossible it's impossible so they went they left us because they was never with us the terror was never with us do you understand me and hebrews 10 26 and 29 says if we keep on deliberately sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth no sacrifice for sins is left you can continue going on sinning and you know god's word so get up out of that bed Get up out of that sin. Get up out of it. We don't keep on sinning once we come into the knowledge of who God is. Don't you know you're playing Russian roulette with your life? Thank you, Lolly. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Thank you for sowing on fertile soil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The narcissist come for one reason, one reason and one reason only. To kill your spirit, your joy, and destroy who you are. That's it. That's it. They ain't come to play pity pat with you. They ain't come to play with you. No, nah, no, nah, we playing with them. I ain't playing with them. Some of y'all are still playing pity pat. I got my armor on. I ain't playing with no narcissist. I know where I came from and it wasn't pretty. That's why I don't play with it. I ain't going back there. All right. I don't, I don't play with demons. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, so a narcissist can claim to love God and do the devil's work, all right? And that goes for us too. We cannot love love uh, sin, all right, and live our lives as unbelievers. We can't live like that. Narcissists are not. We can't live like that. And Thessalonians 2 and 3 says, let no one deceive you in any way for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. For the man of lawlessness is revealed in the son of destruction. So when there's an apostate church, all right, there's a movement away from God. All right. When someone is an, an apostate, all right, they once, they may have once believed and now they reject the truths of God. The apostate church is the church of the last days. And this church will embrace, love you, okay, has embraced false doctrines, all right? And they believe they are receiving, uh, 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 you know, uh, spirits, but they're 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 uh, receiving uh, deceiving spirits. They're receiving kundalini spirits. They're receiving a false kundalini, a false charismatic spirit. They're receiving a false tongue. And call it, you know, all this foolishness, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh. You'll be walking in apostasy. This is why it's dangerous to get, to have people lay hands on you who are, who are not submitted to God fully, who have uh, kundalini spirits, who are false prophets, who operate under marine spirits, who operate under the python spirits. It is dangerous. You must be careful. 
You must be careful. You don't want apostasy. You don't want to be a part of the apostate church. All right. And then when a church, all right, succumbs to being more worldly and more car carnal, danger, danger zone. You know, they are on their way to becoming an apostate church. And the apostasy is like reprobation. It doesn't happen overnight. It is a slippery slope to reprobation. It is a slippery slope into divination. It is a slippery slope into apostasy. But when you don't call out sin, when you don't stand on the word of God, when you don't have value and character and you see no evil, say no evil, hear no evil, this is what happens. Apostasy sets sin on the church and people become more carnal minded. They don't know how to, how to worship God in spirit and truth. They become a religious spirit because now everything is works based. Everything is about the law. Everything's about following 613 laws and wrapping your head. Everything is about the law. Oh, everything is about your theology. Everything is about following your man-made God. Sin isn't called down. It's covered up. How can people get healed when you cover up sin? How can people get, how can people sit in your congregation? That's something that gives me righteous indignation. How can people sit up in these congregations? and they are hurting and we go in and we play pity pat we play three songs we dance around and we shuck a buck and we hook a buck and we roll on the floor three times we run from the back to the front and no one is discerning that the man or the woman sitting next to them is in danger how can no one discern that jezebel is running the church how, how can you huck a buck and speak in your tongue and no one is discerning that the woman next to you is in abuse? How can no one discern that? How can you huck a buck and run around and place your tithe on the altar, all right? And no one is discerning that that brother is under a spirit of Leviathan. How can no one discern this? That's what makes me angry. How is deliverance and healing not taking place because it's an apostate church and apostate churches don't heal, they conceal. That's why. That's why, that's why, that's why we worried about our ties and how we look and our conferences and our books and how well the offering does. That's what we're worried about. We're not worried about your soul, your soul. No, we don't even teach on that here. That's beneath us. That's beneath us. We're a more progressive church here. We sing three songs. We follow the program. We follow the program, all right? We sing, we clap, we come together. The praise team comes up on the stage with the dark lights, and they sing the latest Kirk Franklin and Mary Mary songs, all right? They sing, uh, what's that group? They sing uh, Maverick City, all right? And we come, and we come in, and then the pastor delivers three to five bullet points, and then we're out of there. We're out of there. And then sometimes there are refreshments outside of the church and then our children go into children's church and everybody they go in and have a good time oh yes and our church is beautiful it's like a beautiful university look at it look at that look at it oh i invite all of my friends there uh-huh uh -huh. because we're in the who's who and to be a part of the who's who you you join this church yeah and we come and we have a good time and then after this the pastor sings gives his three to five bullet points he stands at the at the entrance of the church and everybody goes up and shakes his hand and treats him like a celebrity rock star and then everybody ushers out of the congregation the men are in the in the in the um in the parking lot and they tell us where to go and and we leave and then we go to brunch and that's it that's it that's what we do that's what we do it's no healing ain't no healing ain't no healing taking place ain't no transformation taking place it's barely an altar call do they even do altar call Ain't nobody discerning anything. Man, get out of here. Get out of here with that. I'm so tired of this fake and phony mess. Get out of here. Wake up, church. You're asleep. Wake up, church. Thank you, Andy. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Girl, these people, look, they get on my nerves, Shannon. They get on my nerves. They get on my nerves. They get on my nerves. Ain't nobody discerning a nary thing. That's right. 
is exposing these fake churches and pat i love it and i pray it causes them to repent the same thing with me the same thing with me you and i look show me me so because all i'm gonna do is repent show me me full, full roots girl was that not the full routine that right me too trump me too that was how ask me how i know that was it right there that was it that was it that y'all sad sad but true y'all know it ain't a lie apostle says idols unforgiveness revenge spirit fool, foolish foolishness we know how to huck a buck we know we know how to huck a buck but ain't nobody getting set free wake up right right amen that's right wake up right wake up church all right wake up ecclesia all right these people want to be christ notice it's always yeshua it's always christ that they mock and have a problem with nobody got a problem with buddha nobody got a problem with allah it's always christ that they want to mock and intimidate they mock jesus all right you can mock jesus Kanye can mock Jesus and the crazy part about it it was the apostate church when they was defending Kanye oh yeah he could change where was Kanye's fruit are you foolish oh Kobe man I used to talk about these things I had to leave Facebook because Facebook was the phoniest of the fake you talk and this was the Christians that came after me when I'm calling this stuff out I was like y'all really think that Kanye who has now did an album or a song with Marilyn Manson. But see, back there, I told you, y'all be showing me stuff. People be acting like I'm crazy. You can act like I'm crazy. I be knowing. God be knowing. Do you understand me? So they can mock Jesus. Kanye can mark Jesus. Mock Jesus. Claim to be Jesus. Jay-Z can claim to be Jehovah. But as soon as you stand for the true and living Christ, it's a problem. I'm the problem. Oh, you shouldn't be saying anything about Christian Noel Jones. You touched on my anointing. Shut up. Shut up. Fake docile, we Christian. All right. So everybody claims to be a Christian until it's time to follow Christ because they preach another Jesus. All right. And following Christ is not a movement, it's consecration. It's following God in spirit and in truth. It's 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 sacrifice. It's not religion, it's not bowing down and praying to Allah at five times at five points of the day on your mat. That ain't what it is. All right. And these these religions, these false religions will teach you some fundamentally good things. On the outside, it looks enticing to have someone who to have uh, or it's enticing to people dealing with rejection or a lack of self-love to come into these organizations because it gives them structure. It gives them like purpose. It gives them join this love cult. All right, but they in there preaching a witchcraft Jesus, a pride Jesus, a love and light Jesus, a new age Jesus, a false Jesus, an antichrist Jesus. Make that make sense. A signs and wonders Jesus. They preach another Jesus. All right, and the Bible, Second Corinthians says uh, eleven and four, for he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we did not preach, or if you receive a different spirit which ye did not receive or a different gospel which we did not accept which ye did not accept ye do well to bear with him no you don't look when people start preaching another jesus my ears perk up you want the real jesus the new covenant jesus ain't nothing like the real thing baby ain't nothing like the real thing baby ain't nothing like the real thing so you have to know god for yourself you have to seek holy spirit in spite of what i say in spite of what anybody says you take that and you take it to god god will never send you a narcissist but the devil surely will all right yes he will this new age jesus this religious jesus mixing a lot of truth with the lies all right mixing false doctrine error all right uh spiritual all right this witchcraft these uh calvinists this theo the, uh, theo uh theologists all right they know the bible enough to deceive sheep who don't know holy spirit uh women just submit 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 nothing to the men no look we all gotta submit around here all right mormonism cults jehovah's witness polygamy these man-made uh religions uh polygamy these warren jeffs and scientology and church of the latter-day saints it is man-made religions these are false gods 
All right. So let's see. Where are the watchmen? So we talked about them. Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? Who's a watchman? We must be on watch. Is the church asleep? When the church is asleep, tears get sown. Are you asleep? All right. Are you asleep? We don't submit to Jezebel. That's, that's what, when you look, I, I don't submit to Jezebel. But when you are asleep, you'll submit to Jezebel. You'll submit to anything, anything that sounds halfway good when you're asleep. All right, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning for me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning for me. Who's willing to give them warning for God? Who's willing to go and say the things that God tells them to say? Thank you, Mel. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. So these people cannot do these level. R. Kelly could have did what he did without a whole slew of hell. Harvey uh, Weinstein, all right, Epstein, all the Steins, they couldn't have did any of this stuff without people, with a whole organization of hear no evil, say no evil, see no evil type of people around them. So why is no one sounding the alarm? Why is so nobody sounding the alarm? I don't care if no one seems to be listening. Sound the alarm, watchmen. I don't care if, no, if, if nobody if agrees with me. I'm still sounding the alarm. I'm still doing what God tells me to do. I don't care if you agree with me or not. Because I'm going to be a, held accountable for what I did and did not say. I'm going to be held accountable. That's right. God is raising up warriors. We about to talk about that. No time for jelly bag. Get away. Jelly bag. I can't stand jelly bags, Cassandra. We don't play. We slay demons. Get on your post. Are you in my notes? Are you in my notes, girl? Are you in my notes, girlfriend? Are you in my notes, sister? You in my notes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you and return that to you over and abundantly. All right. So these people can't do this level of evil without a, without help. That's right. Send me, Lord. I'm available. Remember that song? Lord, I'm available to you. My will. What is it? it? My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say, yes, my storage is empty and I am available to you. That's all God wants is a yes. Will you make yourself available to God? Sound the alarm. I can't be I can't be silenced, Danielle. It don't matter what these people do. It don't matter. I made up in my mind a long time to go. A long time ago. I'm back. Amen. HT. I'm on full watch duty. Come on, watchmen. Come on. We got some watchmen in here. All right. So you don't submit to Jezebel. You don't tolerate demons. We cast out demons. We don't tolerate demons. But you have the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you want to tolerate Jezebel make that make sense make that make sense stop acting like you are powerless you are a follower of the most high are you asleep did Jesus say can you not tarry for an hour all right then Jesus returned to the disciples and found them sleeping were you not able to keep watch with me for an hour are you not able to keep watch with me for an hour, watchman? Oh, she on here. It's three o'clock on this Saturday. It's two hours and 14 minutes. It's too long. Can you not tarry with me for an hour or two? Can you not tarry with me, weak watchman? I want some warrior watchmen. Hallelujah. 
pray and watch and pray so that you will not enter into the temptation for the spirit is weak but the the spirit spirit is willing but the body is weak this flesh this carn, carnal body is always willing to do some evil so you got to bring this body into submission by the power of the holy spirit you have to bring your heart and your mind under submission of the holy spirit because this body sits on ready do you understand me do you understand me get on full watch duty hallelujah so strong concordance talks about sleep right is to lie down uh to fall asleep liter literally or figuratively uh, all right to fall asleep to drop off to sleep to sleep all right to yield to sloth and sin to be indifferent to one salvation are you sleep who's sleeping and who's awake who's sleeping and who's awake in here all right we must be on post so when farmers separate the tear from the weed right it goes through several processes it goes through two processes right the threshing oh the threshing floor the threshing loosens the hole and the winnowing to get rid of the hole and some harvest ready grains the hole is thin and papery and easy to remove little or no threshing is required as the hole is ready to loose don't you know your harvest is coming in you're being threshed and you're being winnowed hallelujah because the harvest is ready that's why you're here because the holla the, the threshing is going on the winnow is going on things are falling off of you right now that's why you're here you're not here to complain about the narcissist you're here to get pruned you're here to be elevated in the kingdom you're here to be made new you're here to shed toxic traits you're here to learn warfare you're here to be equipped you're here to be empowered you're here to be discipled you're here to be edified you're not here to learn the five ways in the ten signs go over to dr romany's channel and i don't have nothing against i like her too all right but she ain't gonna break down the spiritual aspect of these things you're dealing with demons and god wants to make you brand new do you hear me hallelujah so there are things that are going on spiritually with you there are things that are going on physically with you in the spiritual you're being separated from satan's stds you're being separated from satan's stds that's why the the, the wheat has to be threshed the wheat the wheat has to be winnowed that's what's occurring to you the wheat is being pruned up the wheat is getting ripe for the harvest because the harvest is coming harvest time it's harvest time get away from them stds get away from them the wheat and tear come in the same but they're different in the spirit wheat was sown amongst the tares but it's harvest time it's threshing time it's pruning time all uh, as the god's all-consuming fire rain down here rain down on us lord are you ready for the separation are you ready some of you are being separated right right now that's why you're being separated from your family that's why you're being separated from that man or woman that you love because they are a tear and you are wheat they came up together but now it's harvest time they're being separated count it all joy count it all joy hallelujah count it all joy there's going to be some growing pains though when you get separated there's going to be some growing pains so you got to get ready get ready get ready get ready it's just a little separation it doesn't feel good but it's good for you hallelujah thank you des god bless you may god return that back to you over and abundantly so in closing all right you gotta test everybody's fruit you gotta examine is this thing a week or is this thing a tear they sound good they saying all the right things but what is their heart the heart tells the posture of a man and the heart tells you what's in people's mind all you gotta do is pay attention all right so some of these four wall churches these apostate churches are filled with jezebel kundalini marine spirits witchcraft 
All right, they ain't here putting roots on you in the church. You ain't even got to go outside of the church to catch a, a demon. You can be right there and it fall upon you because open portals, doors have been open that you haven't closed. So you got to be careful who you allow to speak over you, who you allow to touch, it, uh, touch you, who you are coming to agreement with, what covenants have you made. All right, because religious and communal and spiritual narcissists love volunteering and appearing as upright pillars of the community. But behind closed doors, they wreak terror on those that love them most. All right, we got to discern this thing. All right, I have a message that talks specifically about testing the fruit for VIP members. And it's on my clubhouse. If you're on clubhouse, it's still there. All right, so if you are following God over man, you need to wake up. You're going to be held accountable for allowing abuse and sitting under false teachers and preachers. Now, I'm not preaching. I'm not saying, um, you know, don't honor men and women of God. That's not what I'm saying. Don't try to throw the baby out with the bathwater. All right. Some of these people are not sent from God. Some of these people are not of God. All right. But get on your post, read your word and study to show thyself approved. It's a reason why we have the fivefold ministry. I just talked to the ladies in CBU about this. God gave us apostles. He gave us prophets. He gave us evangelists. He gave us teachers or he gave us preachers and he gave us teachers. All right. It's akin to a house. All right. You don't let just anybody into your house. All right. The the apostle is the forerunner for the house. The apostle is the one that lays the groundwork for the house. All right. For the body. All right. The uh, prophet. All right. You don't you have your alarm system for your house. You have your watchman for the house. You don't let just anybody in your house, do you? So the apostle is there as the watchman for the house. All right, so just imagine your house without a, a lock on your house. Just imagine your door or your house where you just let anybody in and you don't, you can't discern what's going on. Imagine that, how your church is going to be, how your house is going to be. All right, and then you have evangelists. Evangelists bring people into the house. All right, they they bring, they bring preach and, and evangelize, all right, and mobilize and get people to come on in. All right, they're, they're agents of transformation. All right, then you have your, your, your past. Your who are supposed to be shamar, who are shepherds, all right? They are shepherds of the flock, so the flock don't get led to slaughter, all right? They are servants of God, all right? But some way we messed it up where the body, the house, this is the body of the house. The body is somehow she um, oh, shepherding the shepherd. Shepherding the shepherd? Why are you a shepherd then? No, they you supposed to shamar in the flock. All right, you're supposed to be teaching and preaching. All right, then we have the teachers. All right, this is another area that's lacking. All right, well, well we have it, but it's like been subdued. We need teachers. We need teachers to preach the full gospel. All right, teachers, where are you? Teachers who will teach and, and preach. All right, who will give people their word. These are Sunday school teachers, our Bible study teachers. You don't have to be in a full wall church to do Bible study to teach. So this is why we have the five ministry and then you have the body all right you have your house all right and then we it all works together all right to come together to shepherd god's flock to to be mobilized to and mob, to be mobilized in the body all right and then we go out and we go to our corners and we teach and preach and evangelize and we come together but the house must be protected where are the watchmen where are they? I'm a watchman. Hallelujah. I'm a watchman. I don't know about you. Not on my watch. It ain't happening on my, it may happen on yours. All right. In the military, we used to have to do guard duty. All right. I, I, you had to stay awake in some crazy hours. I'm staying awake on my shift, not on my watch. Hallelujah. So if Jezebel can silence the prophets, the narcissists win. The agents of Satan, the devil's advocates win. They don't, do they? They don't. Like how? How can you not, HT? Because they become they become all of it. But it was a reason why God made the five fold. It wasn't so that the path. How can you just operate with, with one? How? No, the church needs all of these. You need all of these to protect the house. And that's why the house has become apostate. House just falling all down because they didn't made the they didn't made the pastor who was supposed to be working in conjunction with all they didn't made the pastor all of it. He all all of it. All right. But if Jezebel can silence the prophet, the narcissist win. If they can keep you focused on your pain and what they did to you and what's going on with you, the private devils, the public angels win. 
Do you understand me? That ain't win. If you can be bought with a little money thrown your way, all right? Jezebel knows what you desire. If you can be bought with gifts and money, Jezebel will easily create an unholy alliance with you, all right? You're not going to quench my discernment. So don't think if you throw some money at me that I'm going to call, look, it won't work right here. I don't care what seed you sow. I'm still going to talk about it. You ain't going to shut me up. Ain't, ain't enough money in the world. All right. But some people, they can be bought and they won't talk. They won't talk about you. Oh, I won't say they won't talk about me because I sowed seeds with you. Don't sow no seed over here with me then. Because if it's you, I'm going to talk about you too. If it's me, I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to handle me. All right. But a true prophet does not submit to a false one. All right. Don't try to get over on somebody who has a real relationship with Holy Spirit. Sooner or later, God will let you know. So why has Jezebel taken over the four wall church? All right. For one, the false church belongs to Jezebel. Dare I say it. That's Jezebel's church. Go back to go back to first Kings. That was her thing. Jezebel is a territorial principality. All right. She governs the false church. When, and when Ahab made that unholy alliance with her, she became queen of the Israelites. She became queen a whole witch becoming a bell worshiper becoming queen so jezebel is a high-ranking principality when somebody has this spirit you don't play with it do you understand me but jezebel governs the false church isn't that what she did with the false prophets with elijah isn't that what she did she was killing off the true prophets has jezebel killed you off in the spirit if she has, it's time to rise up. But that's what her job is. She's head of the full, the false church, head of false converts, head of false members who are tares. That's Jezebel's church. Hallelujah. That's the Babylonian church. That's the apostate church. And the wheat has been made compliant and silent and beaten into submission under Jezebel's rule. They love money, don't they? They would do it. They all about money, all about that almighty dollar. Yes, they are. Just like in the natural, we don't let anyone into our natural house. So it's in the spirit. That's right. That's right. All right. But there's a remnant rising. There are watchmen on post. The bridegroom is rising. Jesus is getting up off his throne. Do you hear me? He will raise a signal. Isaiah 11 and 12 says, he will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the, assemble the banished nation of Israel and gather the, the dispersed of Judah from the four current corners of the earth. We are being gathered back, Judah. We are being gathered back, Israelites. We are being gathered. The Gentiles are being gathered back to God. Do you understand me? So prepare the bridegroom. It's about the remnant. God said, I will gather you from the four winds. Where are the watchmen? For the for thus said the Lord to me, go station. All right, go station the lookout. Let him report what he sees. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. They shout joyfully together. For they will sing with their own eyes when the Lord restores Zion. Come on, daughters of Zion. Come on, son of Zion. Lift up your voices and praise him. Hallelujah. Behold, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. But beware for men, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues. And there it is. Where are the watchmen? Narcissists hate exposure. They want to remain in the shadows. Their demons don't want to be called out. It's not about their flesh. It's about the demons that are inside of them. Do you understand me? Who's on post? Jesus returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Were you not able to keep watch with me for an hour? Who's willing to tarry? Who's willing to be on watch? The chosen ones, the wheat, are willing to come out of Babylon, to come out of these apostate churches, to come out of Babylon, because Babylon is about to fall. So you get to make up in your mind, are you a wheat or are you a tear? Raise up, remnant. Rise up, remnant. The bridegroom is assembling. God is assembling us from the four corners of the earth. Hallelujah. The remnant is rising. Wake up. Wake up and get on post. Remember that everybody that says they are a believer are not a believer. Wake up. 
test the spirit by the spirit all right someone that that does evil and 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 in witchcraft and claims to be a, a believer and you believe them why would you believe somebody who is showing you out front why do you still believe that beyonce is a child of god that is Bethlehem's daughter. Like, how are people still, be like, how? How are you still believing that? Like, how are you still getting deceived? Like, what does it take? Did you see when she had on, like, those four horsemen that was in Revelation? They the, they work in symbol and symbolism. And you worshiping these things, you're wrong. You're wrong. I had to come up out of these things. I'm only telling you what I know, what I went through. Do you understand me? So just because somebody sings with their mouth that they love God, just because somebody say, I am a Christian, no, gone are the days. No, you have to check fruit. Do you understand me? What does their fruit say? If I get up on here and say, I wipe the my menses with a page from the good book, you ought to be looking at me sideways. Do you understand me? You ought to just log off and exit the building because something ain't right. Do you understand me? If I get on here throwing up bathroom and symbols, you ought to log off. Do you understand me? If you're a child of the most high God, if I get on here talking about I'm Yehovah and I'm uh, Shin Jesus, you ought to get up off of here. Do you understand me? You don't follow people who, that's black. Get up off these people. Stop throwing uh, seeds into the kingdom of darkness when they show you that they are tears and they are so emboldened nowadays. They don't even care. They put it in your face. They put it in your face. They don't even care anymore because the days are dark. And look, the, look, the, de the de dark days are coming and they know their time is short. Do you understand me? So when people, I don't care. I can say I'm a piece of fruit. Do, do I look like a plum? I may taste like one. Now, do I look like one? No, you feel what I'm saying? Like I can call myself anything. And that's what people do. They call themselves anything. And everybody claims they're a Christian until it's time to follow Christ. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears and get on post, Watchmen. Get on post. Thank you, Jody. And it's good to see you. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Christine. Right. Let's right. Right. Man. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So we got to get on post. So what does their fruit say? What does their fruit say? What does their fruit say? All right, we can we can claim to be anything, but gone are the days where somebody say I'm a Christian and they post scripture on their wall and 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 oh you're a Christian. No, no, let's check some fruit. You have to be an awesome fruit inspector. All of us, we all have blind sides. This is why we have the five-fold ministry, because we all have blind sides. All right. We all have blind sides, whether we want to admit it or not. I don't know everything. You don't know everything. But together with the Holy Spirit, we can put some things together, which is what Satan doesn't want. He never wants us to come together, but God is gathering his remnant from the four walls. He's gathering. Jesus is getting up off his throne. The watchmen have to be on post. All right. Sound the alarm. Don't be here. No evil. See no evil. Say no evil. Speak up when God tells you to speak up and shut up when he tells you to shut up. Do you hear me? But do what God tells you to do. And you're going to know when it's time for you to speak up. You're going to know when it's time for you to say something. You're going to know when it's time for you to get on post because you're going to have them butterflies in your chest. You're going to have that unction in your belly and it's going to be like fire shut up in your bones. And then if you don't do, if you get in a spirit of cowardice and you allow a spirit of fear to come over you, you're going to feel that. Do you understand me? You're going to be able to recognize that you're operating in a spirit of Ahab. God's going to show you, all right? And it'll be up to you to, to, to quench that fear because that didn't come from God. God has given has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Aren't you operating in the Holy Spirit? Go with Holy Spirit boldness and get on post. Raise up, remnant. It's time to arise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message, Lord. Thank you for the for your words. Heavenly Father, if I have spoken in error, Heavenly Father, I, I accept your righteous rebuke, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show me, Heavenly Father. And Lord, if you are well, please, Lord, show me that too, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I come together interceding for your people, Heavenly Father. Lord, rain down your mercy upon them, Heavenly Father. Rain down your power and your gloriousness. Continue to show them who you are. Lord, and why we call you Je Je Jehovah? You ain't no Jehovah. It's only Jehovah. It's only the true and living God. Hallelujah. All everyone else, Lord, is in an apostle, Lord, and we tear down their altars, Lord. We tear down the witches' covens, Heavenly Father. We tear them down, Lord. No weapon formed against us, Lord. We bind up every witchcraft curse, Heavenly Father, that has been levied against us, Lord. Return it to cinder a hundredfold, Heavenly Father. Every witchcraft curse that has been spoken against our lives, Lord, against our inheritance, Heavenly Father. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over it, Lord, and we return it back to sender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your hedge of protection, Lord. Go before us, Lord. Go before us this week, Heavenly Father. Continue to be with us. Continue to raise us up, Heavenly Father. Heal our hearts, Lord, from these wounds, Lord, from these trauma points, Heavenly Father. We're not robots, so we got to deal with this pain, Lord. Help us to cry out. Out. Lord, tell you everything. Tell God everything that's on your heart. Hallelujah. If you're hurting, tell God he wants to listen to you. He want, He just, just doesn't want to hear about good stuff. He doesn't want to just hear about bad stuff. He wants to hear about everything that's on your heart. Give it to him. Give him that pain. Give him that frustration. Give it all to him so he can heal you, so he can make it a new God wants people to be honest. Transparency changes things. God doesn't like fake and phony. God doesn't like when you can't be real and just lay it all out. God can't heal that. God can't heal when you won't be vulnerable with them. God wants people who are willing to lay it on the line. God, I was a sinner. I was a sinner. God, hallelujah. Help me, Lord. I don't want to live like this anymore. Lord, I was an Ahab, Heavenly Father. I renounce the spirit. I break up, Lord. Whether you're a Jezebel, Lord, I was a Jezebel, Lord. Help me. Save me, Lord. I know I don't want to live like this. I come out of agreement. Hallelujah. I come out of agreement, Lord. Lord, I, I was with this narcissist, Lord, because they gave me money, Lord, because they gave me protection, Heavenly Father. And now I'm submitting that I recognize that I was in idolatry, Lord, that I saw after a false God. I sought after a false God to give me what only you can give me, Lord. I went whoring, Heavenly Father. I did this, Lord. Whatever it was, lay it at God's feet, Lord. Lord, I didn't treat them right, Lord. Forgive me. Hallelujah. And then there's no shame, guilt, and condemnation. God forgives you as far as the east from the west. Don't allow anybody to hold guilt, shame, and condemnation over your head. Once you repent, you apologize. If you're able to make it right with the person, you make it right. And if you're not, you give it to God. Hallelujah. But that doesn't mean for you forgive them and then you forgive yourself. Hallelujah. Forgive yourself for what you didn't know. Forgive yourself for what you didn't do. Forgive yourself. Hallelujah. Forgive yourself. And don't allow anybody to hold anything over your head. Hallelujah. We all have past. We all have chapters that we don't read aloud. Don't get in these fake apostate churches and then sit up in there like you perfect. You ain't perfect. You ain't perfect. Who told you that? Just because you put a, a, some lipstick on a pig, don't make it. Look, don't make it something else. Just because you put a three-piece suit on some garbage, hallelujah, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it good. So submit it all to God so he can clean you up. That's what makes you good. It's not the outer adornments. It's not anything. It's not the car you drive. It's not the house you live in. It's not your, your prestige or your status or your this or your that. It's God that makes you all good. It's not your organization. It's not your church. It's not your community. It's God. Put God in his rightful place. Put God as head of your life. Take out every demonic altar and put God in his rightful place. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we ask that your hands of protection be around us, Lord. We pray a special prayer for our children, Heavenly Father. Cover them, Lord. Cover them in their comings and their goings, Lord. And then for those who, who, who uh, desire children, Lord. Lord, place uh, uh, seeds in their wombs, Lord. Heal their wombs, Heavenly Father. 
Heal their wounds, heal their bodies, Heavenly Father. Heal their minds, Lord, because healthy women birth healthy nations. Hallelujah. Do you have a nation birthing in your womb? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for our men, Heavenly Father. Lord, those who have been affected by the snare of Jezebel, Lord, we pray that they aren't silenced, Lord. We pray that, Lord, they rise up in their God-given authority, Heavenly Father, and they slay these Jezebels in the spirit. We need healthy men. We we need healthy fathers. We need healthy sons. Hallelujah. You're the backbone, Father. You're the backbone, King. Hallelujah. Rise up and take your place in your home. Rise up, not from some, some uh uh you know perverted uh sub, you know uh justice or some perverted you know nonsense. Hallelujah. Well, you're ruling your house with an iron fist. No, that's not God, that's bondage. Come out of that, but take your rightful place as head of the household. Hallelujah. And you uh, don't submit to Jezebel. Take your place. Hallelujah. And for our sisters, for our women, take your rightful place. Take your rightful place. God is raising up Esther's and Deborah's. Don't let somebody try to tell you all you can be is this. All you can be is barefoot and pregnant. You're more than a wife. Do you understand me? And if you're not a wife in the household, you're a wife in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't let this world deceive you. Don't let this world deceive you. We're more than conquerors. All of us together in the kingdom, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We are made, we are heirs to a kingdom. We are joint heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Come out of the Jezebel. Come out of Babylon. Come out of this uh, world system. Come out of this beast system and come on over. Come over. Leave the goats and come on over and be a sheep for the most high. Hallelujah. Leave the tares and raise up as a wheat. Hallelujah. As the wheat. Hallelujah. Lord, and we continue to pray for justice in our cases, Heavenly Father. Lord, restore everything that the enemy stole away because you are a God of restoration. You are a God of redemption. You are a God of recovery. You are a repairer of the breach, Lord. Prepare, repair the breach, Lord. Repair our hearts, Heavenly Father. Repair our minds, Heavenly Father. Help them to, to stay stayed on you. Hallelujah. Let us seek your righteousness. Let us seek the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. We don't have to sit with Jezebel to get what we need. God has everything that we want. God has everything that we need. You don't have to go to Jezebel for love. How you going to go to Jezebel for love? Jezebel doesn't even love herself. Come out of those demonic covenants. Come on out of it. For those that desire, for those that are in agreement, hallelujah. May the shackles be broken off of their feet. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God like Paul and Silas. Praise God to the jail cells bust wide open. Praise God in your home. Praise God in your workplace. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed. What did men and women do for you? It's Christ that delivered us. It's Christ that died for our sins. It's Yeshua. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for every Thing that you're doing, Lord. We're going to continue to honor you, Lord. Help us to be lights in this world of darkness, Lord, in and out of the four wall church, Lord. And we lift up the fivefold ministry, those who are on point, Heavenly Father, those who are on point. We lift up pastors, we lift up teachers, we lift up preachers, we lift up evangelists, we lift up prophets, Lord. We lift up the body, we lift up the ecclesia, Heavenly Father. We lift up the remnant, Heavenly Father. Strengthen us, Lord. We cast down every demonic principality, Lord. You said we have the power to bind up these principalities, to bind up the kingdom of darkness, Lord. And we bind it up and we stand on one accord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We lift up your holiest of holy names. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God is a good God. God is a faithful God. God is so faithful to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God. Amen. That's all. That's all God wants. Hallelujah. It's a Mr. B. That's all God wants. Hallelujah. It's so important because you can go down depression, not forgiving yourself. God doesn't want that. He wants us to forgive ourselves. Ask me how I know. Hey, Mary Reed. Hello, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, man. We have to forgive ourselves. Heal us, Lord. 
Heal us, Lord. Give us your shalom, Lord. Give us your peace. I ain't let none of them take my peace. That's how I feel, Joshua. I go to war about my peace because it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. If Jeho Jehovah Shalom gave me this peace, how dare his demons, those demons try to take it away what's rightfully mine. Hallelujah. It's here, Chelsea. The spirit of the Lord is here. Healing is here. Restoration is here because Jehovah is here. Elohim is here. Hallelujah. Yahweh is here. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. That's right. You a wife and you're a whole white male. Uh, you ain't no girlfriend, girl, the nerve. You a whole wife out here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes, forgive them too. And forgive them don't mean I'll, I'll let you back in my life. It means I'll release you to God. That's what it means for me, Joshua. Look, you, you're not my problem. I'll release you to God. God's going to handle that. God's going to contend with that. And best believe, no vengeance is not mine. Because you, you look, when you take vengeance um, into your own hand, not saying that you did or anything like that. I saw somebody sit down in a post. They want to get revenge. It's it's normal to want revenge, but you don't act on that. And that means there's some healing that still needs to be done in your heart if you have malice and, and revenge in your heart. It's normal. But you got to release that to God, okay? Because God will, God will handle your enemies. You won't even, you won't have to lift a finger. Mm, I told you. I keep saying, look, when you when you stand in righteousness and you have on your armor and your enemies come against you, don't you know God fights for you? If God is for me, who can be against me? If I'm on the right side and I allow God to handle my battles, but then if I take it on my own. And I say, no, God, I'll handle that. No, I, I want God to handle it all. Because mm -mm, I look, I keep my hands clean. Mm -mm. Amen. I keep my hands clean. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I give I give it to God. I release them to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're um fire shit. I'm so glad you mentioned hand signs. I watch people's hands and question you to, uh, right. Doing all this one eye and and you know, you know how they be doing, you know, it's symbolism, you know, it's all symbolism. And these people know what they're doing. They know what they're doing and they know who, who, um, they've submitted to. I've seen like Michael Todd and T.D. Jakes and all of them. You go to God about anybody. I'm not here to, you know, all of that. You just go to God, you know, um, cause people can be compromised and it's sad, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, they, you don't, you don't just be doing all this and nah, you know why you doing it. And aligning yourself with with Freemasons and and um, sororities and fraternities, you gotta watch all them. You gotta watch it. All right, none of yeah. You just gotta watch it. Who people align themselves with because they're partnering with the kingdom of darkness, whether they know it and most of them know it. Because with Satan, you know, most of them know it, especially at that level. You know, you know. All right, we lift you up, Shannon, in the, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I received that. Y'all hear my voice? My verse, voice started to go out. Ah, uh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you go out of protection, right? And that's the thing. Like, stay in the kingdom. That's my thing. They stay in the kingdom. It's protection in the kingdom. But when you go into the gutter, you get a gutter snipe, and now you're reaping up judgment on yourself. So if you've done that, you've taken revenge. You're doing, you're doing things you know, out of malice and out of spite, just give it to God, you know, ask for forgiveness and don't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Vengeance is the Lord. Yes. Amen. No, they, they certainly are not. <laughs> certainly are not. But you see how religion and things, religion has been used to start wars and do the most awful things to people. You know, and that's and unfortunately, it's not going to stop till Jesus comes back. But we just have to be aware. Um, yes. Right. Devil horns and all that hiding in plain sight. That's right. All right. Y'all just want to see any more questions that turns people to schizophrenia. Right. And then unforgiveness causes like cancers and things in your body. And this is why people go crazy and, and all kind of different things. So no, don't you want peace? I'd rather have peace. And that's when you have to decide. And that's what witches do. Witches are willing to forego their their destiny because they're angry or because they 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 choose to operate in darkness and in divination. All right. So they'll go into their covens to cast spells. You're, you're a witch. 
if you're trying to seek vengeance and do different things and going to people to cast spell you're a witch you're operating in witchcraft it's different levels of witchcraft you're operating in witchcraft if you're seeking you know to control somebody else's will it's witchcraft that's what these people were doing that's a sign of a jezebel spirit that's what jeff uh warren jeff's that's what jim john those are they're witches and warlocks they are of the jezebel spirit jezebel uses witchcraft do you think a normal person would drink cyanide they were able to do these things because these people were under spells the things that we did when we were with narcissists that nobody wants to talk about all right people in polygamy and people and, and then they talk and you know before they talk they they're able to convince you that this is what you want that's the devil talking to you through demons in your ear these this is the doctrine of devils this is how crafty this is how satan got eve in the garden of eden it's witchcraft it's satan and it's demonic and all they have to do is lay a little seed amen I, right i don't want revenge uh, -uh I, the best best revenge is going on the best revenge is going on in living the life that god has for me to live not even worried about i don't if you worried about them which you will be for a season you know there's there's some you're at a lower level of healing but once you reach, you know, and it's levels, you know, you don't, you don't worry about them. You know, they may cross your mind, but you know, your focus is not them because if your focus is on them, they're still controlling your life. Wow. They're still controlling your life. If a narcissist can't take your love, they will gladly take your hate. They're still controlling you. There's you're still like, who was that? The, the puppet master there's, they still have you on the stream. Now you are on a love spell. Now you're, you're releasing hate. It still energizes them. Narcissists work off of energy, off of your spirit. You're still giving them your spirit, whether you're mad or whether you love them. It's energy, it's spirit. So it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. They just want it because it energizes them because they're soulless and they're, well, they're, they're dead inside. They're dead, they're spiritually dead inside. They're tears. So they feel alive when they feel when 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 you give them love or hate. That's why you have to give them indifference. That's why you give them. I don't give you either one. I just give you indifference. I'm cool on you. That's what that means. All right. That's what that means. That's right. So that's that's it. That, you don't have any power over me. I don't love you. I don't hate you. I I love. I I. It just is. I love you with the love of Christ, but in my do my spirit, do I love? No, in the Holy Spirit, I have to. But in my flesh, no, I can't say that. Now, my family and stuff, even though they did me wrong, I still love them. You know, I still love them, but I'm I'm called to I'm called to love them. So that's why I can't do this in my spirit. I cannot do this in my spirit. It has to be done by the Holy Spirit. It has to be right. They often feel they are hollow. They are very hollow. Just think of somebody who has to go through life perpet lying and perpetuating evil. And that's why when people say hateful things, I know that's that's what's in your heart. You're 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 empty. And it made you feel good to spew that hate. It made you feel good to, to it made it made them feel good to do that. So I know inside of them is a miserable little person. You know what I mean? Give them y'all and give them nothing. Poof give you dust right right i love you way over here far away that's love them from afar that's right that's right and they know they know who they uh have committed to right but they think they do the evil one right is the good one they are deceived right and god has given them don't you know god will send you a spirit of delusion if you are not willing this is why i am a lover of truth you have to be a lover of truth I don't care how bad, how hard it is for me to, it's not hard for me to accept truth. I don't care how it makes me feel. You have to be a lover of truth. Narcissists do not love you. Some people, it is hard for them to accept the truth of who a person is. So when you're like that, you are under a delusion. And if God sends, if God sends you a, a spirit of delusion, you are in danger. Do you understand that? You are in danger 
of submitting to, to continuously staying in some, because that's the only way you can be with a narcissist if you are um, in idolatry and if you don't come into the truth which means you are submitted to Satan. You are in, in agreement with Satan and the father of lies. And when you come into agreement with Satan, you are saying demons, come in, come into me. I'm in agreement with you. Now you're in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. So you're going to get what you get with that kingdom. So you have to tear up that contract and come into the kingdom of heaven. You have to be a lover of truth. I don't care how hard it is is amen you have to be a lover of truth you have to love the truth or you won't be able to you oh I, I can't believe i can i can but it's hard for my flesh to believe it but my spirit knows my spirit knows your spirit knows right rotting corpses in spirit hey stephanie yeah you got back and safe amen amen yes amen so glad to see you made it back hope you had a good time in the lord hallelujah thank god for traveling mercies yes we know we had people in vacation and different things hallelujah what else i don't know why i'm tearing on here with y'all no i need to be off of here all right anything else all minds clear god will give you your heart's desire in your own mind in your mind only having the form of godliness but they are clowns and rotten and they convince themselves that's because they have a spirit of delusion because they would not accept the truth of god so God gives them a spirit of delusion and now they are under that. And so they believe it what's, what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. And they convince themselves that what they do is right. You have a narcissistic parent or, or whoever, and they believe that, that what they do is right, that it's right to smear their, their child's name or whether it's a narcissistic child or whoever, or a family member, whoever, they in their mind think that what they do is right. But actually, and it's, it's weird because in a way they know it's wrong because they hide it and they cover up. So somewhere in their mind, they they know what they're doing is wrong. This is why they work so hard to remain unexposed. So, but they have a spirit of delusion. That's right. They live in an illusion. That's right. The king's child, right? Amen. Confession. It is Jasmine is as essential to healing. It is because God, you know, Proverbs twenty eight and three says those who can uh, conceal their sins will not prosper. So, uh, and this is why people, a lot of people in the church, you know, church teaches you to kind of, not all of them, some of them teaches you just to, you know, look the part, follow the laws, do the part, but not really be, not really, you know, it's, it's all about popping surfing circumstance and nobody is discerning that there's a problem. And how can, how can deliverance go forth if, if, no one is discerning that there that healing is needed, that deliverance is needed. So, and, and confession is needed. So, you know, renunciations and renouncements are needed. You know, because that's confession. You coming out of agreement with that. If you've been through narcissist abuse, you need to come, and you're ready. Only when you're ready, you you renounce those things. You renounce your sins, and you confess out loud. Because Satan is dragging you into the courts of heaven. All right, this is a spiritual battle physical battles are one in the spirit. So if you have a court case, your battle is the, the loss of the win has already been determined in heaven, but people, carnal people can't understand that. So they fight the narcissist in the, in the, um, in the physical. And that's not where the, the battles are won. And it's not to say that you're going to win every battle, but, but God will turn it all around um, for your good. That's a lie. We speak, uh, we renounce that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that is a plum faced lie, right? They keep uh, trying to keep re receiving the truth. Amen. Mm, mm. They they be so into necromancy, and you know whether narcissists or not, a lot of our cultures are into necromancy. They think it's okay to talk to dead people. You know, oh my grandmother died. She's coming to visit me. Well, if your grandmother is visiting you after she passed away. Um, you know, or I'm just giving that as an example, or your, you know, your loved one. That's not, that's not your, your loved one. That's a familiar spirit. That's a demon that is posing as, as your loved one. That's necromancy. And if you sit there and talk to them, you are a necromancer. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You don't talk to dead people. You don't talk to dead people. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. Anything else? Yeah, right. Right. Thank you for being here, Juanita. Yes. Amen. You need this. You do. When you're in spiritual ICU. Amen. Thank you, Mel. Speaking up is important. It is. And that's how you get your voice back. Um, you do. Amen, Stephanie. You get your voice back. You finally release your testimony book. Amen. And it feels good. It feels good when you can get all of that out. It does. Amen. Right. That's good. She told them that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, my narcissistic partner has calmed down tremendously and is more patient and playful with me. I prayed over him a lot. Is it possible to make it work? Uh, see, just time will tell. If, if they're a narcissist, probably not. Not to rain on your um, parade. That that's how they operate. Narcissists, you know, the abuse cycle works. They'll love bomb you. They'll future fake you. They'll they'll become everything you need. And then when you least suspect it, when you get settled back in, so time will tell if he changed for real. You know, time will change. You know, because you can pray over him, but this is what people don't understand about prayer. All right, prayer changes things absolutely. But God gives us free will and we have to be careful not to pray against a person's will. So if he wants to change, he can be changed if he's not reprobate, you know, how far he is, you know, on the scale. But typically narc people who have the Jezebel spirit don't change. Jezebel is a reprobate spirit. It takes a lot for somebody to become a Jezebel, for somebody to go, go down that road. So time will tell. Give it a little time. Don't give you don't give your heart. You just sit back. All right. You just sit back. And then you said your partner. So let me tell you like this. Right. Let me tell you like this. If you sin to get into that thing, th th this is a biblical channel. So I got to keep it 100 with you. All right. That's not your husband. That's your wife. And hopefully I'm not living together or anything like that. But if you're in sin, you're opening your hedge of protection against this person, against demons is open. So so you either going to have to stay out of out of the will of God to keep that. Or you're going to have to submit and say, God, have your way. Do you love God or do you, do you love God or do you want that that person? You know what I mean? So it's, it's two it's things, different things going on there. So but you said your partner. So that doesn't mean that you're living together or any of that. You could just, you know, so I don't want to make that assumption. But um, but understand that God's not going to send you a narcissist to be with. But time will tell if that person is is going to change, if they're um a narcissist is not the diagnosis that matters. We don't diagnose narcissists. We just are spirits. If that person is really under the Jezebel spirit, the chance of them changing is slim to none unless they come out of agreement with that. You can pray over them. They have to want to be changed. And that's not typical um, with narcissists. Amen, Shannon. <laughs> so time will tell. It's not possible to make things work. The, the only way you can make things work with a narcissist is if you submit your purpose, your goals, your everything to that person. So you're giving up your life to be in agreement because you want what you want. And God will give you over to that um, if you want that. Now, if you want to come up out of that, you want the person that God has for you, then, then God will um, give that to you. And I know that doesn't sound what you want to hear, but it's the truth. OK, so it's not possible to work with a narcissist unless you submit your plans, your purpose. Um, you're out of the will of God. Then it will work if you're willing, as long as you're willing to stay out of the will of God to 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 get what you got. All right. I hope that makes sense. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Mina. Amen. I, I hope that. Right. Be be aware. Don't give your, don't continuously give your heart. Be on guard because narcissists um, don't change typically. All right. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Right. That's right. We're talking about mar narcissists modify their behavior. So if they, because you have a soul tie with them. So they know when you're pulling away, they, they can feel that. All right. So they can feel, they can feel that it's a, it's a uh, transference of spirits. So they feel they feel when you're pulling away. And that's when they go in and they put that mask on. When you first met them, they go in and they, and they put that mask on of when you first met and they give you all the things that they know what to do. And this proves that the narcissist all along knew what to do. 
but they wait until you're almost out the door until you've had just enough. And then they go in and they put that mask on of when they first met you. Cause all they do is wear masks and they put that mask on when you first met them. And then they give you food, should fake you and do all the things that you've been crying about the whole relationship. And now it feels like, Oh, look, we're turning a corner. Look, she loves me now. Look, he lo he's willing to do the work. And then when you turn your back, mm, ask us how we know. That's right. Watch the watch it. Right. They And then they have to pray and repent. But all they do is typically modify their behavior. All right. That, that's what they do. You're welcome. And I know that doesn't feel good, but time will tell. Time will tell. It will. And then you just come on back around here. You just come on back around here. Cause you're going to need your 18. Okay. Come on. They have to pray for themselves. Right. We think we can just pray, pray the devils off and pray the demons out of them. Pray to them. Do they want them demons out? You'll be wasting your time to do deliverance. First of all, it's dangerous to do deliverance on people um, who don't, who are not ready to come out of agreement with that. It's very dangerous. It's dangerous for that person. So if that, because it's going to be the fight of your life. When you when you come out of agreement with the demonic realm, they don't they've been in your family, your lineage lineage forever for a long time. So they don't want to give you up. So when you try to break out of that, then, um, you know, it's the fight of your life. That's why all hell breaks loose in your life. That you've been a willing, a willing participant in the kingdom of darkness. They don't want to let you go. You know, whether it's your family, whether it's a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, they don't want to let you go. And a narcissist never thinks that really that you're ever going to be brave enough to leave them. They think that they've trained you. They know you have a soul tie. They know you have an agreement. And they think that you're never going to be uh, strong enough to leave them. And so they're going to add you to their harem. That's what they think. They think that you're just going to be another member of their harem because they feel like they've, they've, remember the narcissist's goal is to beat you into submission. And so they think that you, they have beaten you down enough. They have whatever or whatever, however they did that you will never leave them and your goal is to prove them wrong that's your goal so yes they must want it for themselves amen joy they must want it what is be modified behavior them future friends yeah narcissists modify they don't change that's like when you go to therapy with the narcissist and they go in narcissists go to therapy so they can become more craftier that's they go to therapy so they can learn your tricks. So when you see these self-aware narcissists and they talk in third party, like it's every narcissist except for them. And people are like, oh, ah, look at that. It's stupid. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, they changed. No, all they did was modify their behavior. They're causing hell behind for somebody behind the scenes. <laughs> so it's foolishness. So they just modify their behavior based on who they're around, based on what they want in that moment. They put on a mask, they modify their behavior, that's all they do. And then they go out and as soon as you turn your back, they're going to stab you in your back. Amen. Amen. Uh, you have to look at somebody, um, <laughs> look, I would invite, like reach out to, you know, publishers. Is Charlene still in here? She's an editor. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think most of the time they change names so they can't sue you because you want to make sure that, you know, you ask an attorney or somebody like that. So legally you're covered because they're going to come back and say, oh, well, and you don't want your book. Getting... So I wouldn't me personally, I wouldn't use their names. I would use that. You know, when they write, they'd be like names have been changed to protect the innocent. You know what I mean? To protect not the innocent, but you know what I mean? So if um, when I write my my if I do, uh, I'm not going to use their names. But people don't know who you're talking about the people closest to you. So I would, no, I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't use their names just to protect myself legally um, because we know how they are. You know, they, they hate it. They gonna know who you talking about. Yeah. They gonna know. Right. Pride holds them back. Right. Leviathan is a strong man. Principality. Jezebel. Just think these people have Jezebel and Leviathan strong man principalities inside of them. And you're trying to love it. Like really, like if you know they're narcissists and you want to stay with them, then I, I would look at your you. If you know this person's a narcissist and you're trying to make it worth with a narcissist, I would look at you because there's something, um, not wrong, but there is some is something inside of you that um, either doesn't think you're worthy, 
doesn't, you know, you're so so tied in trauma bond and, and have Stockholm syndrome or something that you're willing to stay with a person. Because it was it's one thing to stay with a narcissist if you don't know what it is. But once you know that this and you know that these are demons and you want to like play and like tame demons. You know, and it's something that we, we it is a process because, you know, you go through cognitive dis dissonance and, you know, things are happening with your brain and, and you know, it makes us um, desensitized. But, you know, we have to look at ourselves as much as we look at them. We have to look at ourselves to see why we accepted this abuse. And that's what I had to do with me. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's it, people when these people talk about narcissists, these channels are very popular that that jab the narcissist and talk about the narcissist but when you turn the the finger back at you because that's really where the healing is that's really where it is and, and most a lot of people not most but a lot of people aren't willing to to look at themselves because it's something in you that is submitted to that narcissist and you it's your job to figure out why all right yeah is in one of those types of marriages amen right there's something that's causing that they need that person there's a root call and that's what it is you have to get to the root in order to be delivered and healed you have to get to the root right right i'm glad you said it joshua i'm trying to be nice over here get out asap and never look back but you know i know people have to learn um on their own <laughs> you can we can say girl get out run are they really going to get out and run? No, they got. They have to learn for themselves. They have to. Experience is the best teacher, and then she'll be back, uh, hopefully. Anybody who's in that situation, don't don't let shame and pride make you feel ashamed. Keep coming back, all right, because it's healing here, okay? Idolatry never play, pays. It doesn't. Right. He's mirroring you. Right. And we, we never know the, the depths of evil that are inside of these people even if they seem like normal. None of us ever have all the puzzle pieces to a narcissist. And that's a scary thing, you know? Right. They definitely, look, a lot of them, look, they just, a lot of them with you because you got a place to stay. They they move in. Nobody falls in love quicker than a narcissist who needs a place to stay. He can change his identity tomorrow. Just as, as easy as we put on socks and, and shoes is as easy as they change personalities. Right. It is because it and I um, somebody had put in a comment that empaths and codependents are the same. Empathic people and co whatever you, empathic prophet, whatever you, new age you want to use the Bible, whatever it is, you know, empathic people and codependency is not the same. Codependence now a lot of times empath empaths can be codependent. They have learned that, you know, because of that. I think he talks about self love de uh, deficit because we, you know, grooming and conditioning to you know always put ourselves last you know or you know and that's why a lot of vulnerable narcissists um are inverted or or, or cohorts are inverted narcissists you know what i mean or vulnerable or codependents can become inverted narcissists um because they you know if you don't get healed you can this is why you need deliverance because a number of them will go over and then these are the people that they keep attract they keep staying with the narcissist they it's like they need a narcissist so when they become an inverted narcissist, they need a, uh, or a covert or a vulnerable narcissist, they need another, they need a narcissist and they become codependent, you know, and that's how they, they find one. If they get out of one, they find another narcissist, you know, cause they aren't willing to do the work. And not to say if you found a narcissist, if you've been doing that, not saying that either, but if you don't get to the root of that codependency, you'll just keep, you just put band-aids on it. And you can become a codependent where you need a you feel like you need a narcissist. That's dangerous, you know. But codependency is toxic. And actually, you're not really it, the narcissist like is an illusionist. So they trick you to believe that you need them. So you've bought into the lies. You've bought into the narcissist narcland that you need them. Honestly, the nar we you don't need the narcissist. The narcissist just convinces you because of your own uh, issues that you won't face, that you won't get to the root of. The narcissist convinces you that you need the narcissist, but it's the other way around. You can survive without the narcissist. You just don't know it. The narcissist needs you to survive. The narcissist is the one that they, all they do is, is just a transference. So all they do is is transfer everything that they feel onto you because they aren't willing to face that in themselves. 
So you become a mirror of everything that the narcissist will not face in themselves. And because we are empathic, you're uh, an empathic person, you absorb their feelings. You absorb it. That's why you have to become an empath who doesn't absorb. You you observe, you don't observe, you don't absorb. That's when you when you can see them and you become indifferent. That's when you go to another level of healing. That's what you know people call super empaths and all that other stuff. That's when you go to another level of healing. All right. Well, you can observe somebody's emotions, but you don't become one with their emotions. You don't become one even with your own emotions. All right. But narcissists convince you that you need them. They need you. They are empty inside. So they it's like a, a car of fuel. Of, uh, you know, going to a gas pump, they get fuel off of everybody else in their lives. They get fuel off of you. They, and then you're not the only one that they're talking to. They get fuel off of everybody. All right. No one person will ever be enough for somebody who is empty. So they, they plug up into you and then they drive off and get fuel from, uh, from 20 other different sources. So they're, you're, they're codependent on you. You're not codependent on them, but they convince you that you are. All right. Uh, let me read a couple more. Let me get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Use an alias. Mm -hmm. Right. Lots of people use pseudo names. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank y'all for that. Uh, let's see. Thank y'all for being here this long. We have to focus on ourselves in order to heal. Right. Right. Run for real. Run for your life. <laughs> amen you changed the names good um yeah yeah and it's that it's a lot of people okay how many of you thought you could change the narcissist and how many of you how many uh people or how did the narcissist change if you change if you stay because you thought you could change the narcissist, we just talked about this on clubhouse can you can you love change the I, I did a video can your love change a narcissist so people think when people are like that, they bought into the lies and it's going to take for them, right, child, to come out. Codependents can manipulate, right, because they become invert, they become inverted narcissists if they're not healed. They become narcissistic. And these are the ones that masquerade. These are they're actually kind of covert, um, but they're inverted. They become they've been around the narcissist so long. And this is why you have to get away from the narcissist. When you're around evil for so long, then that what isn't that what the Bible says? Get away from these people. People think that they can be around evil and it not affect them. I'm, you know, people really think that they can tame demons, that they can tame evil. And that's what's wrong with a lot of codependents. They think like that. And then, and then they become manipulative. If you stay around evil for too long, it's going to impact you. And you pick up the narcissist traits. You're both just mirroring each other. Because you have to find maladaptive ways to cope with the things that they are doing to you. So you pick up narcissistic traits. That's why I always say after narcissist abuse, you need deliverance. You, you empathic person, you need deliverance. Because you'll pick up their traits in order to survive. Yes, you will. Oh, no, not me, not me. I'm so good. Empath swear, empathic people swear they just so good. You're not that good. You good compared to a demon. So you need deliverance too, right? Mm-hmm. Same, same. Mm-hmm. Right. They will tear you down mentally and emotionally when you start building back. It's freeing. It really is. It really is. It really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have to come out of that, and, and it, it'll be a uh, it's a process because you can be hurt so much that you just become numb, and that's not good either, right? You got to get to the root of that. Annoying, annoying. Right. The exit. Means extremely, oh, oh, amen. Yeah, I'm glad you got out of that. I'm glad you got out of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all. God bless you all. Amen. I'm glad um, people, y'all are breaking chains. If you're still in that situation, ask God for revelation. He'll give it to you. He'll give it. Right. He'll give it to you. When he got better, he went back to narking. Right. And you'll, they'll get sick and you nurse them back and then. They look, they gonna show you they behind. They're gonna give you they behind to kiss. They're gonna tell you how you really feel. And then that's why I always say this: you have to be careful when you know somebody's a narcissist and you go back to them and you and you 
you know, you put away what you what you know to be true and you give them a second chance. You'll become acrimonious because you know what you saw and you did not heed your warnings. And then it will be harder to you for, to, for you to forgive yourself because you saw the signs. God told you. He showed you that this person's a narcissist. He showed you that this person's a Jezebel. He showed you that this person don't want to change. And because of your heart, your silly little heart, all right, your precious little heart, the heart is deceptive. You don't go with your heart. It has to be faith over feelings. But because of, you know, your heart and your wounds, you'll give them another chance. And, and then you'll, you'll be out here trying to kill them or, 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 you know, do all kind of crazy stuff. It'll be harder for you to heal. All right. So just be careful with that. Yes. Break the soul tie and the trauma bond. Amen. All right, y'all. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me this long. I appreciate y'all. It was a good conversation on um, communal narcissists. Just be careful um, of religious, covert, communal, um, you know, so-called spiritual narcissists. Even in, in these communities, just be careful. It doesn't mean the person's a narcissist, um, but, you know, we all wrestle with, with different things. So when God shows you something, take heed um, to what he's showing you, even if nobody um, else sees that. And then remember, we don't control other people. We don't do any of that. You know, you don't want to work in the realm of witchcraft. You allow people um, to do what they do. You just have a um, you have a choice to, to be with them or not. All right. You have choices and don't forget that. All right. God bless y'all. I will see y'all. Um, uh, don't forget uh, faith based workplace. My husband, he'd be live on Wednesday. Um, I wasn't his live. I wasn't feeling good for CBU. I'll see you um on thursday week six we're talking about breaking the soul ties so if you are not in cbu i'm i don't know what to tell you 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 missing out that's all that's all i can tell you all right um yeah and then when i have these workshops and things of that nature all right and i always give sponsorships and different things so it's not about the money all right it's about souls being saved but i do charge because it's it's my time and i put a lot i have a whole university i put a lot I put my blood, sweat, and tears to this. And, you know, when you're in a body, people think, hey, oh, why are you charged? Because I can. And because this is a this is a business uh, ministry side, I give. But the business side, all right, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. And I won't allow uh, narcissists or covert narcissists to try to take advantage of my kindness, all right? Because people will do that. They will run you into the ground. Do you hear me? All right? And I won't let people do that, okay? So God bless you. Amen, Charlene. God bless you. And I will see y'all next time. Uh, have a good evening. Continue to break those chains and may God be with you. Amen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Check it out. Yo. 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 Yo.